clap? Clap. I can't. What's up guys, welcome to episode 2 of The Coffee Club. Uh, we are back one week later, just as promised, and today we have a very special guest. We have Mr. Waleed Suleiman. How you doing, man? Good. How about you guys? Thanks Pretty for having good. me. <laughs> good to have you here. How are we going to do this? I don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have Maybe to get... I'll shoot with Ollie. Okay, that might be easier, because Gus is kind of breaking yeah. us up right now. Is he napping sure still? Yeah. Gus, you got anything to say? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gus says hello. He's... Uh, Jordy took him on a... On a long walk, played with the ball this morning, so he's pretty tired. He's pretty happy, though. But, uh, yeah, we're back. Episode 2. Didn't think we'd make it here. Episode 1 was, uh, it was pretty good, honestly. I was pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, what's your guys' kind of take on it? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just happy to be back in, back in the studio. <laughs> As my penance for not being here last week, I'm I only, made the coffees. Yeah, I've only listened for the um, first five minutes. What do you think? What do you what do you what do you think in the first five minutes? Uh, it wasn't was, bad. It was good. I just kind of had to go run after. It. Fair enough, <laughs> so I got to continue that. Yeah. No, yeah. I think like we talked about. I feel like we enjoyed doing it, but it was definitely we doing it. a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it's I uncomfortable guys, at the start. Yeah. I remember you yeah. guys were talking about. We got used to it. Yeah. Nicknames. Were we? Yeah, I think so. What podcast were you listening to? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I think it was not that. You know, I, I think, think it was the wrong one. The wrong coffee club, man. <laughs> <laughs> were we there? I don't we're think we were. Well, lead is not up to scratch with no, the first episode. Oh, he has, he's not going to see episode zero either. He'll, but. Uh, uh -oh. no, he'll, he'll jump right in. I yeah. mean, I was really happy with the reception. Yeah, I think it's good to be able to get back some feedback too. Yeah. Um, from the first one. Obviously, we ended a bit abruptly because of Morgan's appointment. But I think uh, the more practice we do, the better we'll get. And hopefully, yeah. people can give us more insight on what yeah. they'd like to see. Yeah. And here. good. I was like... There was definitely, oh, it felt so good. Like some people like shouted us out on Instagram. Jonathan Gold actually did a pretty nice ride up on us yesterday. I was like, man, that, that looked pretty good. But honestly, yesterday I was in a weird mood because I was kind of hit with like wondering if like we were too controversial because a couple people were like, ooh, controversial. Like my mom said that. Kyle Murmur <laughs> said that to me. I was like, were we actually controversial? Like I couldn't really tell. I didn't think we were. Yeah, I I hadn't really thought about it, honestly. We, I mean, we did get, we cracked into it pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, last I, I episode. Had, I think, I think probably the worst that, thing was just the title. Well, yeah. I, I titled it "Why Is Everyone Leaving Bowman?" I mean, it's, it's like, true. which was pretty dramatic, but it's like that's, that's it's just the truth. That, yeah, I think <laughs> that's actually <laughs> happening. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and it's just like just a bit of just a bit of click. I think getting on Kyle Merber's yeah. newsletter was my favorite oh, part of yeah. that year. Yeah. I, got, I was getting on the plane in Flag at five a.m. Yeah. and Wednesday morning when Kyle Merber's newsletter comes out. Flick through it and just a photo of us. Well, interestingly, we actually talked about Kyle Merber in episode zero, remember? What did we say about him? Shit, I can't remember. <laughs> but all, I, all I remember about that is that... We he was just in episode zero. Yeah, we texted about it and then Ollie said, who's Kyle Merber in our group chat? And I thought he was just like, didn't know who Kyle Merber was, but apparently it was a joke. I was joking. Apparently it was a joke. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was joking. I Obviously, know. I thought it'd be funny because... Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I obviously know who Carl Merber is, and he's a big influence in the track and field world. He is a big influence in the track So that's and why field. I thought it was a good joke. But I'll, unfortunately, <laughs> my intelligence for jokes go over these no, two No, no, no. It was just that, and like, I'm a pretty big running nerd. I feel like Jordy's pretty plugged in. But with you, like, you're definitely very, very knowledgeable, especially about the 1500 these days. But the, maybe, like, the difference is, like, I mean, for example, this is a good example. When Dathan and Andrew Weeding both reached out to you, Regard, regarding recruiting you to come join on, I don't think you knew who either of those people were. No, I didn't. So, well, I did, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty, I don't pay attention to a lot yeah. of things, but since joining the pro world. In, yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Can you turn that mic down a little bit? It's a little, it's, it's kind of loud. Since joining the Instagram world. Up a bit. Oh, great. So I'll turn it up and turn it down. Is it, what about this one? You just look at the thing. You're uh -huh. the bottom. Yeah. Is that better? No. So up or down? Getting there. Up. I think it's too small. Almost it's too small. I'm the, I'm the last, the bottom yeah, one. You're the yeah, you're bottom one. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I was a bit out of it yeah. going in college and then now being a, Just being a pro, a bit as well. it's been easier to <laughs> being able to... I'm looking at you because I'm talking to you. <laughs> no, that's why. God. Um, it's been easier to kind of be more in touch with the world that I'm currently yeah. running yeah. in. Anyway, let's get on to Waleed. 
Um, Woo! Yeah, let's do it. We'll eat. First, thanks for coming. No um, problem. Specific yeah, I specifically drove here for the gala. We appreciate not to go to Seattle. We appreciate your support for not that. At all. I care um, more about on than I do. Yeah, you're about staying here for like three or four days, huh? I am. Yeah, That's Tuesday to. Well, when am I leaving? Fuck, Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Yeah. So what? What do you think of Boulder so far? Um, it's pretty. It's nice. The altitude is kicking my ass. Mm. I didn't think five thousand feet is really gonna be that much of a difference, but. Um, I've been breathing pretty heavy. Heart rate is at 180 when I'm running 730 pace. So that's not good. Don't worry. The, the Brooks Beast only goes to Albuquerque. So like, that's like only like 45. That doesn't even count. So you'll be fine there. Oh, hopefully. After we'll coming see. here, that'll feel easy. Albuquerque is not a fun place to go to. Really? I'm very sorry for everybody Don't you who's guys from spend Albuquerque. Like, but doesn't the Brooks Beast spend yeah, like their I think, whole life there? I think we go there from like January to April. It's a pretty long so time. God, it is a really long time. It's a pretty long time. So I think halfway between that, I believe we go back to Seattle for like a week or two. Does so? Have you been out to Seattle at all yet? Yeah? I have. I was there for two weeks right after trials. As like a visit? Yeah, just to go like check things out. Mm -hmm. um, I was gonna actually get a place there when I was um, up there, but then I like realized that what's the point of like spending all that money on rent when I'm probably not gonna be there and spending most of my time down in Oxford. Um, so right now I'm just gonna be living with two of the girls on the team. Um, for like the first few months and then I'm gonna find my own place after that so which is sad living alone but it is yeah what it is. Seattle Seattle is like an interesting town to have a pro running group I mean I guess in some ways it's similar to Boulder but it's just like it's literally like one of the most expensive towns in it the is US. it's it's big I was looking at places to live in like a 25 like 20 like 250 square feet like studio it costs like $1,300 a month ah oh, Jesus it's just like yeah is that, where, is that where you're living in well, that's I still haven't decided yet where oh, really? where I'm going to be living oh, after. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I spend um, the first two months with the uh, the two girls on the team, which is Chris and Nelson and Alio. Mm -hmm. um, but good God, that's so expensive. Coming from like Oxford, where I paid like five hundred fifty dollars. Jesus, for, like brutal. a big room. Like we had like a front yo front yeah. yard, backyard, full garage. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have stuff. that, man. You're competing with uh, Bill Gates to buy to yeah, buy a house good there. God. Jeez. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> that is really tough. I know, and Jeff Bezos, I guess. Yeah, he lives. And Jeff right. Bezos lives yeah, there too. Yeah, like all the billionaires yeah. live there. Yeah. Yeah. She'll probably hit up Bill yeah. Gates. I think he's divorced. And now, Bo right? Boeing is it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is. Wait, I think both of them are Washington. divorced. No, they're both divorced. Bill Gates. Dude, you could marry. Bill. I could. I mean, you do have. I mean, right now in Seattle, you could totally do that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Should they should send him an email? Ask him what's up. I think that's the way. Want to hang out? I think that's the way to do it. But uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, Oxford. That's the town, right? Yes, my favorite town. That's your favorite town? Yeah, it is. It's in the middle of <laughs> fuck nowhere. But. Yeah. yeah, I'm so interested. Like, I mean, you have a really interesting background, which we'll get more into originally from, or well, your family's from Sudan. My but family's from Sudan, yep. Then uh, you were born and grew up in Jordan. Jordan, yeah, I'm on Jordan. And what age did you move to Virginia? I moved to the U.S. in 2014. I was... 15 years old when i got here damn that's like that's crazy because yeah. that's like that's such a lot like o often when i meet people that have that like they move when they're like like one or two you know like they move when they're really young but yeah. you actually like freaking i, I really yeah i like that basically spend my whole like teenage life there yeah in a way and it's like kind of coming in here it's like completely different culture and it was kind of like there was definitely some sort of like a cultural shock where it's like there's yeah. certain things that like you know you're allowed to do here that you cannot really do there because culturally it's not appropriate at all. Yeah. Um, so it, it is, it was a, a weird shift, shift um, but I'm glad that I got the hang of it very quickly. Yeah. Um, it kind of helped that I was also like part of like, you know, the cross country team where I got to be able to like make friends immediately, even mm -hmm. though there was some sort of like a language barrier yeah. um, between me and most of my, my classmates. Yeah. How was your English coming over? Not good at all, actually. <laughs> um, I was only able to, like, I knew like, random words like table chair or car or whatever um i knew how to say hi my name is waleed yeah. and stuff like that or i want to go to the bathroom or whatever um but more likely like apart from that like i was just terrible Jeez. at english you know it was just i don't know if i'm allowed to say that i'm not gonna say it you can say you whatever, whatever you want, say whatever you want. Whatever you i was want. straight off the boat yeah, yeah. you can honestly say whatever you want swear whatever you want to yeah. say um keep it real um man. the interesting thing i want to kind of is uh the running did you run when you started running um, and then running, obviously, in the U.S. How was that? Like, was it different? Obviously, it was different. Yeah, were you like, running in Jordan? In yeah. a way, was yeah, I, was, like? I was only running for, like, six months in Jordan. Oh, okay. So okay. I wasn't really running for long. Right. Um, I started in, like, October of 2013. Um, and I was playing soccer with a few of my friends, and then a coach of mine was like, hey, like, you seem like you're pretty good at running. You got a good form, and so on. Why don't you, like, 
joined my club and immediately like the next day I just joined the club and then from there um we didn't really have a lot of races but it's like there it's not the same way as it is here we're like you know those races like you know every month or every single week there's like a race going on over there it's like just seasonal mm -hmm. it was only in the spring um so we didn't really do much we were just like training the whole time um and then my first race with the club from what i remember was um a 256 kilometer race what the fuck <laughs> but it was it was a freestyle relay uh. so it's called dead to red so you start you run from the dead sea all the way to the red sea that's it that's pretty um, sweet. So, and then it started at like 6 p.m. And each team has like 10 runners. So the, we had nine. Our coach was like the 10th person. So you can imagine he only made us run and he only yeah. ran like probably like just very little of it. Yeah. How much um, did you run? I ran a lot. So he, everybody like average around like 23 kilometers. Wow. I think. Um, and then, so you hand, so everybody has their own strategy of like how you want to like, you know, hand the baton and so on. And the baton is like a giant like glow stick. You, so you have to like you break it when it starts to get like dark. Yeah, um, that's crazy. So you start running. We did like two k at first. One person ran for two k. The other person ran for k. And then after that, we started switching off every like four hundred meters, and that was like for the sp span like the whole race. Every four hundred meters, we're just like switching. Wait, that makes no sense. How are you switching off every four hundred meters? So you have two vans. So a van, <laughs> a van would be like dropping Man. somebody off, that's and then you crazy. come in, you give it to him, and a van will be waiting. Wow. You hop in this van and the other van is already up there, 400 meter ahead, oh dropping God. somebody off. Was it was it dangerous? Like, did it get dangerous at night? Did um, any dude, this like, is like worries or concerns. So I, so one of the vans broke for a little, at like it was like a midnight, right. and we were in the middle of the the desert. So you ever watch Transformers? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know when they go to Egypt and then they first land in those like big giant like rock mounds, in the middle of the, so that's that's in Jordan, that's Wadi Rum. Right. So uh, we were right there and. I got the glow stick and I was running and one of the vans broke. So I was running for like a good mile alone. There's nobody around me. It's pitch black. That's and scary. I had to hide the glow stick under my sleeve because I was scared that coyotes will see it and they'll like come at me. And like I had to make sure that I wasn't breathing very loud because I didn't want anything to like, like hear That's me. That's so sketch, man. Dude, it was so sketchy. It's like hands down probably one of the scariest moments of my life. <laughs> you guys oh, yeah. think that, you know, like. Instead of like, cause country's hard. That sounds pretty hard to me. Yeah, yeah dude, man. it was it was messed up. Hard. You got over here and then you started racing like American cross country five k on like a golf course. You were like, dude, yeah. this is so easy, dude. But it was like <laughs> we we ended up we ran it for twelve hours thirty three minutes and thirty three seconds. We still have the course record. Jeez, from what I remember. That's awesome. Wait, yeah. What, what average? Whatever, yeah, what average pace is that? <laughs> I have no clue. That's a good question, Two, actually. Two hundred fifty six. Two hundred fifty six. Jordy's yeah, the engineer. You can probably there. work that out. No clue. Wait, what what degree, degree did you get? From uh, Ole Miss. Oh, history and history. Arabic. Okay. Yep. That's sick. But uh, yeah. Well, that is like freaking crazy to do that and then come over. So you mustn't. What what year did you? What grade did you start in? Must have been freshman year. Oh, okay. It would have been freshman year. Yeah. And you're an American citizen. I am right yeah. now. Yeah. I got my citizenship last January. Oh, I'm congratulations! Before. That's Thank awesome. you. Appreciate it. Yeah, so he's like actually the only American here. Yeah, I, American. <laughs> you're the only American here. Like literally, yeah, yeah, on this crazy, couch, you're the only American here. I heard it's pretty hard to come by those American citizenships these days. Yeah, it depends on like how you get to the U.S. So because my parents were refugees to Jordan, therefore they signed for like the UNHCR and like the UN have this program where like families that have been relocated because of some sort of conflict, um, they spend a certain amount of time at you know the country that they seek refuge to. Mm -hmm. um, you sign to that program and then they relocate you to like a first world country where you can start your life all over again from the beginning. Um, and it happened that we got relocated to the U.S. Oh, shit. Um, so you could have gone anywhere. Technically, yeah. but Could have become Australian. Yeah. No. Or New Zealand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That would have sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it, do you still have Jordan citizenship? Uh, Sudanese. My parents didn't allow me to get my Jordanian one. It takes really? 15 years to get your Jordanian citizenship. Um, but it takes probably like a month to get your Sydney's one because <laughs> nobody really <laughs> wants it. <laughs> so if you're going to compete at the Olympic Games, you compete for America or you compete for America? America. Yeah, I, I, I chose to compete that's for smart. America. So um, that's, that's why you compete at the trials, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I compete and man, that last round was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I feel like you raced like 30 times this season. I did because I, I started Literally. racing in January. Yeah. And then I did NCAAs indoor. I ran the mile in the 3K. Got second to last in the 3K. Nice. <laughs> um, That's right. Ollie came last. <laughs> what did you come second last? 
What was this? In? When was yeah, that? You blacked Indo out 3K. in the 3K. 2019. Oh, yeah, I came last Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> One place better than all. Oh, That's that was right. a Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do, you, you raced like the I, mile I, I, and the uh, DMR I'm still, and the 3K. I'm still running that race, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm still mentally running that race. Dude, I remember seeing you there because I was... What was I was doing the five K three K, but I just remember like I turn up to the track for the three K and you'd race the like the mile before that and uh, wow we we brought it up again <laughs> Jody winning <laughs> this is convenient. this is three three from three Jody winning I, instead of a mile <laughs> somehow but I just remember like Ollie was like Ollie, like between races Ollie was like just looks so tired and and I think like the coaches didn't really know what to do they're like ah oh, should he get some work on him like should he warm up like he was just looked like he was like so cooked i was, I was like bad, yeah. i was like man i feel kind of bad carried the whole team on your shoulders no i yeah. didn't <laughs> both of them on two three can buck you right yeah yeah pretty cool races anyway that was wait well we can I, I have a good story about that okay go for which it. we could talk about that because this is something which i think i have a lot of stories about but that was one of my drug testing issues was there at uh because at the, you know was they were texas well, it's at every, like literally every single time I get drug tested, I have a drug testing issue. But the because that was a tough one because it was five k Friday night, then sat, Saturday was a three k. Like it's just a two day meet, just quick. And the five k was probably at like eight p.m. on Friday. Or so. Like it wasn't early; it was like late. And then I had to get drug tested after, and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. He's snoring. He's having a great sleep. But uh, it was pretty stressful because, like, I couldn't pee. And I had a race the next day. And I, like, wanted to, like, go to bed. I probably didn't go to bed till like, 2 a.m. that night because I just, like, was there. I was the last one. I took so long. And this was hilarious because, like, I want to pee so bad when I get drug tested. Yeah. Oh, I guess you don't know this. I, no. I, I like can't pee in front of people. Like I have you like pee shy. shy. I'm pee shy. Very pee shy. It's weird because I'm not like I'm not like nudity shy at all. Like yeah. I'll like whip out my dick like, like <laughs> anyway. But I, I, can, I can confirm that. I can I've, confirm. That. I've already seen Morgan's dick today. But, but uh, DJ skinny penis. Ago. Yeah, skinny dick. <laughs> but uh. But like the, I just can't pee in front of people And I don't know what happened to me when I was a child Like sporting games are like the worst thing Like the big urinals But so when I get drug tested It's like the worst I'm getting better But like this time I like just really wanted to get it done I mean obviously you always do Like no one wants to be in there Like yeah. the drug tester wants to be done You want to be done Is the drug tester just some like random old yeah. white yeah. dude Just staring at you Exactly yeah. Good but, god That's a yeah, weird it's, it's horrible I would be pee shy <laughs> yeah, good god. But the thing is <laughs> They have experience and so they're normally pretty nice. Like I've had some not great, but this guy was the nicest and I was like I was straight up with him. Like that's kind of how I do it. I'm like, hey, just so you know, like I really struggle with this, but like I'll I'll like try anything <laughs> like to get me to pee. Like if you like know any tips that have worked for other people, like I'll try it. Yeah. And I tried so many things. The most funny thing that I tried that night was we were in like the locker rooms pretty much of the Birmingham complex, whatever it's called. Yeah. And uh, he's like, well, one time someone tried to take a shower and it worked. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I was like, down I, yeah, I was, like, uh, so I was like, get in the shower. Yeah, I got in the shower. <laughs> but, 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 like naked? The uh, yeah. Yeah. You I just was, took all your clothes yeah, off. Yeah, I, I took all my clothes. Game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Like, I just like, I'm like so desperate because I'm like, I've probably been there for two hours. I'm like, all right, I just like want to go to bed. I want to get this done. This is horrible. And in my head, the thought before it was like, man, if I go to this length and I take a shower and this doesn't work, I'm going to look like such an idiot and I'm going to be so wet. And that's exactly what happened. Like I, I tried it and I just like, uh, I just still couldn't pee from the shower. And so then um, eventually what happened was, this is like something that happens, which is like, this is a dirty little secret. It's not really a dirty little secret. But honestly, what happens so often to me is that I take so long to pee and I try so hard that they honestly just like give me so much space. Like they pretty much like stop looking, which like doesn't sound good. Cause that's like direct violation of what's meant to happen. Yeah. But they're pretty much like, all right, man, like I can tell like you just like a fucking, you are terrible at this and I want to go home. So I'm going to like stand all the way back here, kind of around the corner and just peek in. And that's normally what gets it done for me eventually. And also I just like always drink like a shit ton of water and stuff. And they should um, just like use the mirror to like yeah. look at you. Honestly, so what if they just like seems have like, like a behind. camera like pointed okay. right That'd at be like, so much better. Two alternating like days. That doesn't sound right that there. bad. What happens if you're actually doubling? Well, they, like, don't, I, they don't drug test you till after. What? Do you have to tell them like, that? Until the end of the day, race? I think. Like, yeah. I almost yeah, yeah. missed watching yeah. the 3K because I was in drug testing also for a long time. Really? If I had the 3K, would I. No, they wouldn't drug test you till after. They wouldn't come up to you till like your last event. Huh. Like, they don't have to take you straight away. 
So yeah, that was that story. I don't know. I just want to slide in a drug testing story because I like those. But uh, anyway, back to the main man. What are we talking about? We're talking about your... Morgan. Just wanted to talk about. I just, yeah, we weren't even talking yeah, about anything talk about about <laughs> Morgan. Morgan just wanted to talk about his penis, and that's good. You know, that's how we <laughs> yeah, get the second know? episode going. Anyway, the that. first thing I want to say to Walid as well is thank you for coming on our show no before problem. a similar show in Seattle. That is with your group. We really appreciate you. Uh, I don't even know what the what's it's it called? called. It's called Sit and Kick. It's called Sit and Kick. Yeah, neither have I. It's a group. Really that big at all? It's a. It's no. a. They're, mm. they're, they're trying to do a good job with podcasting. Um, yeah. With Brooks Beast, uh, I think the name is Josh Kerr, and uh, mm. who's the other guy? Never Morgan? heard of him. Did he even make it uh, to the Olympics? David I don't know. Yeah. And then what's his name? Rebeach. Ribbit. It's Ribbit. like a frog. Ribbit. Like a ribbit. David Ribbit. Um, we appreciate you coming on. Yeah, no problem. Alan. And yeah. uh, we'll always have that over them. This is the number one podcast <laughs> in the US. I think I checked I checked our stats for the first episode. Yeah. And I think that's correct. That's correct. I think we're the it's number like, one in the US. Dang, that's really good. <laughs> Better than the Joe Rogan podcast? Yeah, easy. Hands like, down. Got him covered. It's no problem. But uh, He was calling us yesterday saying like, mate, you, we can't. How are you guys doing? We, we, like, we, we want to pay you off that. to stop doing it. And Morgan's yeah. like, nah, I got to talk about my penis in episode Dude, two. Dude, so the people have to hear about the penis. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> the situation with drug testing. Anyway, do you want to move on to the... Well, um, let's talk Let's talk more about Ole Miss because yeah. there's Hottie a lot toddy. to talk about this. Hotty toddy, whatever the hell that means. What is it? mean i i think it's a drink it's like okay a, that means like whiskey sense. and something i haven't heard of that yeah I but also I don't, I don't know why they chose that as our chant wait what's your guys roll tide what do you mean yeah it's better than roll tide but it's no, their no. Chant. It's roll like, tide's alabama the that's alabama what's the hottie toddy chant it's it's just it's just like hottie toddy gosh amati who the hell are we and he just keeps on going like that you just keep saying that try to say that that sounds like a cult say that five times fast that's like a cult it's like hottie toddy gosh amati who the hell are we hey Flam, okay. flam, bam, bam, all this by damn. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, what's your guy's mascot? Uh, land shark. What the hell? I don't know what the fuck what? is a land a shark. Land shark? Is that Gus? I have no I'm idea. Sure Gus is a land shark. He's a land hippo. Yeah, he's a, a land, land hippo. hippo. <laughs> so yeah, we used to be, well, we are still the rebels, but we're not oh, allowed yeah. to use a mascot. Um, Wait, so why? we, then we were the black bears. Wait, explain that for a second. Why you can't use a mascot? So Colonel Reb, it's just. Kind of like racist and all that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, just racist. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So it's the same yeah. way as my high school. We were also the Rebels, too. Yeah. And then we stopped using the mascot, and now we're the Mavericks. Okay, fair. Um, so then they started using Black Bears. And then our defense, I think back in like 2012 or something like that, somewhere around there, uh, they were really good. And they started like throwing like this. They called themselves I've seen like that. the Land Sharks. I've seen that. Um, so from there, they kind of were like, let's do this. So we are the Land Sharks now. And yeah. our Land Shark or Shark named Tony. Tony. <laughs> like the Tiger. <laughs> that's awesome. Great name. That's uh one of my questions. Being a runner, this is like I don't know. I've never really. I haven't spent much time in the South at all. But I just have to imagine, like, well, I just want to ask you, what's it like being a distance runner in the South? Do you guys just get heckled like so much by like people driving in their trucks? Um, not really. Mostly like people like leave us alone. Like okay. they they know if, if you wear like your Ole Miss stuff and you know you sit track and field on it, they kind of like people know like who you are and so on. Yeah. Um, but. We don't really try and like wear our short shorts or like half tights going to Walmart or whatever because then you'll people will like look yeah. at you like the hell is this guy doing? It's a good look. The hell is this boy doing right here? Yeah. <laughs> exactly what to say. So. That's a good impression. <laughs> That's good. Um, but no, I mean for for the most of it, like you're you're fine. Yeah. I mean it's just dirt roads forever, so you just keep running on it and just a bunch of beer cans on the side of the road that makes you wonder like people actually like drink and drive on those back roads. So Yeah, it's not that surprising, is it? But uh, what year did you start at Ole Miss? 2017. What year did they win the DMR? Oh, they won the DMR 2017 indoors. Uh, so it would have so been you like that. the yeah, it was the year before I got there. Um, but our team right now is better than that team. Really? Like who the hell is Craig Angles? Yeah. Uh, like See, I had, that's what I wanted Lusa, to ask you about. What, is, what it was like looking up to those guys because I I was watching that from home, and I remember watching the DMR on tv and they had like interviewed the old miss team like yeah. like you know how on espn they do that like they have the like right after the race yeah. no no like they've already interviewed them before the race oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then uh -huh. during the race they show the interviews and it was so entertaining like that team i mean like they make a ma massive deal out of like how fun they are yeah. like are they, they had mustache well, they all had mean, mustaches <laughs> didn't they they all had the mustache yeah, they that, yeah. Was, that was, was I, I can't grow i don't know why um i got terrible genes unfortunately <laughs> Um, so I am indeed, uh, yeah, I just, just can't grow one. I, I wish I could. Yeah. They all had the looks going. I know, dude. I like wanted to grow one and like dye it, like yeah. just blonde. Like, it. That would look sick. It kind of look, look cool. But I yeah, I mean, 
Oh, uh, it was very early. It was very early. Um, but I remember it because we had we, we had a team there, and it was interesting to see because I mean that's when you know obviously Craig had the mullet and the mustache and yeah. the charisma and. 2017. It was, it was, we didn't have a team there. No, we did. Didn't we have Joe and? Oh, it was 2018. Yeah. The 2017. We were watching it. I was, no, like I was watching it from home. Oh, from Australia. N- no, I was, <laughs> I was in Wisconsin watching it. Oh, sorry, I no. didn't realize home was Wisconsin. Well, that's where I lived at the time. Yeah, <laughs> and well, you could just say it was in college, not at home. But uh, okay. yeah. I mean, I would I never, I would never like, say oh, home from Wisconsin. No, home is like, Australia. Wait, but you, you were in college. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. No. You're a freshman. I was. No. No. I was a junior. But I, I mean, I qualified, but then I, I had a stress fracture in my foot. Uh, so that's why I wasn't watching it. That was probably, were you in school? That was your f- freshman year. 2017? No, sophomore No, year. that's soft, sophomore. I was there. Were you? No, on the track, it would have been his freshman year. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I don't, I honestly don't remember. Really? Yeah. That was I just remember, year. I just remember that the old Miss got a lot of hype from yeah. that race in particular. And I think, yeah, yeah from there, it was kind of just like, Ole Miss is like, crazy people yeah. you know like and like try to have but fun they were, all the yeah, time, which they is, were trying to like put that image out. yeah and which and is we fun. do yeah and, 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 and it like created we, it created like a, yeah. a, a bigger audience and like hashtag good for the sport yeah you know so and that's kind of like you know one of the reasons that or one of the things i was looking at when i was deciding what college i wanted to is that i wanted a team that kind of like had that equal balance of like you know we're still gonna have fun but we also kind of care about running as well um the, some of the schools that i went to like they either were like were just you know partying all the time and you know trying to like live the college life or like too serious about running to a point where like if running starts to go bad like you know like you don't have anything else after that kind yeah of. um but almost kind of like was that like sweet spot of like we got all this like team traditions we try to have fun as much as we can like hang out every single weekend and all that kind of stuff like our, our coach is like a friend of ours kind of in a way yeah he's young like, isn't tell, he? yeah he's like 33 right now i believe 34 that's so young um yeah he just had his kid shout out to hudson <laughs> Hudson. So, what are some of those uh, team traditions? So, uh, we celebrate Canadian Thanksgiving. When's that? <laughs> it's somewhere in October. I'm not exactly like just sure. Before, when. I think. Yeah. Um, so we like dress up in like denim suits or like you know uh, whatever. Have like a Canadian flag, What's which is a Canadian tuxedo, right? Yeah. So our Canadian flag is actually an Austrian flag that we just stick a leaf in like in the middle of it and you just flip it sideways. That's so just, smart. Yeah. Um, and then we have uh, Rebel Olympics, uh, which is during spring break. So the whole cross country team divides into like six teams, um, three guys and three girls. And then each team is like a different country. Um, and then the first day you try and make like, um, <laughs> you try and make like any sort of like traditional like food of that particular country, make food, dessert, and then the judges eat the food and you know, they decide like, you know, that's good or is it that's bad? Pretty yeah, we should, we should do some oh, food-based yeah. competitions. And that's then, awesome. And then the next day, um, you dress up in a traditional clothing. Um, and then the, kind of like the games begin there. So you'll have the first ceremony. People take pictures with the flag and stuff like that. Um, and then you just play random games. So there'll be like egg toss or like tug of war or um, word search. Um, and then a bunch of like stuff like a fruit by the foot, or whatever it's called, a watermelon eating contest and all that kind of stuff. And then toward the end of the day, there's a scavenge hunt. So the judges have this like list of things that you're supposed to do around Oxford. So it'll be as an example, like eat a raw egg. <laughs> so if you want to eat that, you can, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. So that's a point right there. It'll be like, go take a picture of an orange door. Damn. It's just somewhere in Oxford, you gotta go find an orange door, which is there is. Uh, or there like is do like door. do like seven loops around the roundabout. <laughs> who, sits, um, who sits these challenges? Who uh, judges? Usually like the judges, is they're random every single year. Um, and then, there is one where it's like, go run a soap four mile. What? And there's like a hundred points. <laughs> yeah, that makes so, sense. <laughs> that should be a lot of points. Yeah. To but you only got like an hour oh to do God. the whole Wait, thing. Wait, did anyone ever do that? No. Everyone was like, you, you got to do it. I was like, I can't do this thing in an hour. Like, I got to warm up and like that do that stuff. Tough. Yeah, it is really hard. But that, would, that, would, would that be like an instant win? Oh, that, <laughs> usually it would be an instant win. But no, no one, no one have done that. Or like yeah. another one is like, there's one where it's like, go steal Van Hoy's dog. So he has a dog nice. and he's like, just go steal it. Usually we just take it, put it in the, in the car, take a photo of it and send it to the judges. You'll get like 10 points from that. That sounds fun. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's fun. That, Rebel Olympics are fun. There's a good tradition. That's a good one. We actually. didn't do anything like that. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Yeah. And are you? Anything fun? 
<laughs> anything <laughs> fun oh, at all? Joey. Anything just in? Just, just tell them. Tell tell us your traditions. Actually, you guys had some cool traditions. Yeah, What's that stump thing? Yeah. Huh? The preseason thing that Dave McNeil invented. What? What's that? You're not supposed to know about that. Oh, sorry. Uh oh. All right. <laughs> delete. Secret. Delete. Delete. McNeil, we'll, we'll, we'll cut this out. We'll cut this out. <laughs> There's we, a big whatever Dave McNeil secrets. did. We still do that. So yeah, no one can know about know. that. That's why. Uh, that's why they win NCAA's every year because of these traditions they have. So they're not going to share that yet. But I don't think we had we. I mean, our team didn't have any cool traditions. We would normally try to have like a preseason, a postseason party. Yeah. But I like more the idea of having like a more involved game, mm-hmm. like you guys yeah. have. Like that's that's more cool. We also every uh, now and yeah. Charlie yeah. McDennis Christmas party. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah we would have. Yeah, Christmas party that was actually a cool thing we did. What we, about the bottle, the bottle babe thing? That Maybe I don't know if that's, that's a Christmas party. That, yeah. That I don't know if that's a tradition. But that, okay. That so a that is a one tradition. We would do this thing called. Uh, for our Christmas party, we'd do like babe in a bottle of champagnes and shackles. And it was like, champagne and shackles. Yeah, it was like we would have a Christmas party, uh, but then like for like the hour or two hours before the Christmas party, we would have do this thing where it would be like just the men's and women's teams there. Mm-hmm. And you would have names in a hat and you would match up a guy and a girl and then they would get tied together with like a little thingy. And oh. they would have a, each each partnership would have a... Uh, a bottle of wine yeah and then you had to be tied up until you finished the bottle of wine and it was actually pretty fun it was kind of like fun, edward yeah. 40 hands you know like a little bit yeah. like you hold it. i think gus is fun. dead yeah gus he is hasn't serious. made any noise <laughs> he's uh he's having a good snooze but yeah th- that was fun for the christmas party it would always be like super rigged like who would get matched yeah. with who and stuff and uh some people we, <laughs> we would like we rigged it to like set up couples and yeah stuff. Was, it was it was fun like that because we would be i think it was uh did we did we do that to ben and alicia no, we did it to Tanner and um, Elise. Yeah, that was like a good one. They were like they're lots still, of them. They're together still. Still together, like we set seriously. them up because we of you guys. Claim it all. Because wow. of we us. claim it all. Look yeah, that. but it would be f- sometimes because like we like no one on the team was necessarily really that good at drinking wine. Mm-hmm. Well, it would go a few ways. Like sometimes we'd have freshmen. Like that would be a party where they would see it as a challenge to like literally just finish it as quick as possible. And Ooh. freshmen would like die. Like they would, they would. Oh, freshmen! They, they would be eight, it'd be eight o'clock. Mistakes. Like, it'd be eight so o'clock, and they're to completely, watch, just <laughs> completely rinsed. Like at that point, you're thinking like they need yeah. to go home and drink some water. Yeah. And then, and then I remember our final year we were doing it. We had uh, some guys like Kai Wilmot and some like some of our other friends who had been off the team for a couple of years and who were just like really good at drinking. And they like they like probably finished two bottles before like any yeah. like anyone finished one like they were just like this is so easy for us and they season just season trained yeah so that was our traditions like which was actually pretty fun maybe we should try to do that this year I don't know how we would do that with the we, the, the, well I mean we've got to figure out yeah it wouldn't really work certain things well we, we're coming up with that we're coming up with our own traditions yeah namely tomorrow the uh, the OAC autumn Ooh, gala man. yeah autumn gala. First annual, First annual. OSC Gala. We realize that the Met Gala, it has a theme every year, and the theme is Met Gala for ours, so we didn't really yeah. do that well, mm-hmm. but we'll figure that out next year. I think oh, it still makes sense. Well, Met Gala this year theme, I don't know, but the famous theme is up. like the church theme that Chadwick Boseman wore, that cool church style church. suit. Like there was a church yeah. theme, hmm. Met Gala, and then that got really popular, but I don't know, this year could have been, um, I think it was some... Something to do with the American origins or something. Oh, I don't know. There was a lot of stuff. Tax the rich. Tax the rich. Was Asap the Rocky thing. wearing the blanket. Yeah, he looks Lewis very Hamilton t- with the weird. Yeah, he we're gonna be Lewis Hamilton tomorrow. I'm gonna try nice. and attempt <laughs> to wear that. I don't think I don't think I'm gonna pull it off. But the boys here, give you me already. Pu- we saw it yesterday. It looks good. I appreciate it. All the oh, boys wait. look good. Okay, the theme. We're gonna get photos. You the guys theme see was it. American independence. American independence. That's what, what I thought. What is that? I looked it up. Is that just like fuck British people? What does that mean? I mean, yeah, but like Lewis Hamilton was there, and he's British, so. I guess but, it wasn't okay, in that case, what was Kim Kardashian wearing? How she, was that she was, yeah. she was dressed like, as a Dementor so, from so Harry apparently, Potter. Apparently, it was, it's like one of those things where, like, I'm pretty sure, like, most people just like say fuck it and like disregard the just theme, yeah. do whatever they want. Yeah, I think I mean, most people don't. I mean, Billie, Billie Eilish wore like an incredible dress. I don't think it had anything to do with American. Was it like the gold one? Yeah, it was yeah, yeah. massive. I it was that. huge. Yeah. So. So I that's try- why I feel like our theme, Met Gala, just generally makes sense. It's just dressing it's just, up as a, a famous, yeah, I don't know, just, dressing up just famous. Be a out there. See, I really wanted to get Jordy in a dress, but uh, yeah, wait, Jordy, to no avail. Have you decided what you're wearing yet? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm getting there. Something's coming tomorrow. It's a surprise. Wait, day of? Day of, dude. I'm that's kind, I'm pressure. That's crazy. That's high. Yeah, if that it doesn't is, come, I'll put on a dress for If early. it doesn't fit. 
Um, Lee, they, are you getting a haircut? What's going on? Uh, no, unfortunately, I just couldn't find a good barber oh, here. Couldn't find. You know, well, he turns up. I, mean, and he's I usually like, need a haircut before like a party because you know I kind of like I get hotter in a way. I go from one point five to like two point five. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that's pretty good. <laughs> Dude, you are so hot, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean I'm just gonna rock this whatever I got right now. So yeah, it's yes, been a while since I got a cut. Yesterday when you were like. Yeah, man, I normally get my hair cut by a Puerto Rican. Like, I'm going to look for one around yeah. here. I was just like... They're really good at giving haircuts. Was, Highly recommended. <laughs> I was just like, bro, good luck finding a Puerto Rican <laughs> around here. This is, this is Boulder. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Maybe in so Denver there will be, but... Yeah. Yeah. Denver, yeah. All right. Do you, so. wanna, do you guys want to talk about one of the topics that we have? One of the... One of the topics that we have going on. Yeah. I mean, do you, we probably, do you have anything more to talk about? Ole Miss? Yeah. We uh, haven't even talked about like your running there. Yeah. Oh dude, man. That was, dude, that was a crazy four sh- years. Shout, tell you what. Yeah. Sh- dude, shout yourself out. Tell, um, us, tell us your accomplishments. Let's see. I don't know. Okay. I am. Wow. Where do I start? How many SEC this? titles do you have? Uh, I think a handful. Probably yeah. Like a handf- five, at least six? a handful. Yeah, Somewhere in there. That's a lot. Uh, four times all American. Nice. Um, Almost kicked your ass, but not really, Oliver. I wanted to do that, but I could not. What race was what that? Was this? That was uh, what was it? It was in Austin. No, no, no. It was no in Austin. I was not even close, dude. Austin, I was like, I didn't even make it through a final. What what race? It was Terre Haute yeah. Cross. I think I finished twentieth, oh, we and you were like eighteenth, yeah, you something like that. Yeah. yeah. I did not realize you had that range. I That's do. So impressive. Yeah, I know. Why did you never run a five k? Um. Eh. Miss, that's why. <laughs> well, I, I could have ran, yeah, I could have ran a 5K, but I still, like, I still was able to, like, run the 15 and the 8 too. And yeah. we had a bunch of, like, 5K guys. Uh, so, it was, like, no point of me really, like, trying to do that. Yeah. Um, but I think in 2024, I'll probably try and run the 5K at trials. That's exciting. So, we'll Let's see what we happens. Heard it, heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. heard it here well, first. Lead. That's exclusive. We'll lead into 5K. Watch out. Everyone. I don't know who's going to be running by then, but I'll yeah. kick your ass, buddy. All right. And at the, at the U.S. trials. <laughs> Hopefully we'll both at the Olympics together. That'd be nice. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. No. Um, we'll see either 15 or the 5K there. But, yeah, see what else I did. What would you come in NCAAs? Third, Third. Both indoors and outdoors. I mean, like, dude, obviously, like, not even close. Like, by far the most deep. I know. <laughs> the hardest dude, year to that get 1,500. Was, that was crazy. Like, Man. there's been amazing individuals. Yeah. Like, I mean, Ollie, third to two Olympians. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Literally, even like, even just like, people. just yeah. watching the DMR as well indoors. Oh like, my 917 God. or 919 finished second. Mm. That was our team. So like, oh, yeah, wait, yeah. you guys were in 919 and came yeah, second? Oh. It's just like, it's mind blowing. If you could do that any other year, you'd like win it by like a mile. Dude, I thought our 926 was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, and we also <laughs> ran that um, on a oversized track. Yeah, we did. Track. You guys yeah. ran that on a bank too, aren't you? Yeah. The yep. school record in AU is like 940. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you guys run that? You ran that at a dome, right? No, I have no, I have no clue. That's a, that's Isn't the dome like an awful place to like race at? Even practice? Um, I mean, it's epic for training. It's yeah. good for training. The, the air is just super dry. Yeah. You just get like the like al- cotton mouth? altitude coffee. Like, <laughs> yeah, you have to like drink between every rep. Yeah, man. Racing so. in there, you get super fit though. Yeah, what was it like Knowing that you had to like go up against like Yard Nagusen for freaking Cole, whatever. Um, what's his name? What's his name? I actually can't remember. Yard Nagusen, Cole, 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 Hawker. Cole, Cole Hawker, Hawker? Cole Hawker, yeah, Cole Hawker, Cole Hawker from yeah. the University of Oregon. Yeah. yeah. Shout out. Um, Shout out. I mean, if if you asked me that question like my freshman or sophomore year, I'd be telling you that I'm so nervous and that I'm about to pee myself. Yeah. Because I'm so nervous. Um, but I kind of like got in a w- like mentally, I had to like get prepared for all this stuff because like. I'd usually go, <laughs> when I went to like NCA's like sophomore year, I'd always just get nervous of like, oh man, like I don't belong here. There's all those guys that like, I see it on like, you know, flow track. I've seen mm-hmm. like heard about it and let's run and all that yeah. kind of stuff. We're like really good. Do I even belong here? Um, and it's like a shitty mentality to have going into like NCA's and such like a big and important race. Um, but then like junior year and senior year, I kind of was like, it's time to like cut the bullshit. Like there's no reason for me to like be nervous about anything. Um, it's time to grow like a pair of balls, like a huge ball, yeah. and just like go out there and That's like it. get it done, you know? Like just trust in, trust in the process, trust in your training, and know that you're like talented enough to be there. Um, and that's kind of like what I changed. And, you know, I'm not, I wasn't scared of any of them. Like I tried to go and actually beat them. Mm, yeah. And, you know, that's I had like too much confidence. So, it kind of hurt me in a little. Um, but, you know, just like part of like learning right now. I'm, yeah. That's very know. insightful because I think that's one step a lot of people don't necessarily take yeah, as well. Yeah. Is like, when you get to that point, like your obviously your career shows yeah. that that 
when you get to a stage where you're like, oh, I can race with these guys. I can line up and say yeah. like, I can beat everyone on this line. I'm confident yeah. enough to do that. Yeah. Some people just can't break that. I know. Like, like, oh I, my God, it's Cold Hulk. Oh my God, it's Yarmouth Goose. You know, yeah, oh I've seen so many people who just absolutely <laughs> kill the workouts. They have mm. unbelievable workouts. You're like, man, this guy is about to run like something dirty. And then they just get on the track and like, you just can't yeah. perform yeah. like you know it is it's something that you definitely learn yeah. but also yeah, i have to kind of individually just yeah. take it is on really it. hard to like like be right mentally yeah mm -hmm. when, when it comes to running like physically like that that comes in like anytime like, it's so easy to get that obviously yeah it takes long you know a lot of practice and stuff like that but it's like the no, easiest, the mental part is so hard part. man yeah. and like to give you credit i can like if i picture you running i I like think of you like at the front of a race, like yeah. your big balls out there. Yep. Like you're in, like, you seem like, like you're in control. You definitely, yeah, I, I tried yeah. to do that. Yeah, you definitely I'm, did that. You know, so I got well. to a point where just like I'm not really scared of anyone. Yeah, but um, you have to go in that. Some, like, like kind you, of in a way, like I, I I cheated myself going into the final at trials where like I I saw Centrowitz and I just like completely forgot everything like in really? a way i just like got back to like ground zero just really? literally just warming up right Sancho there was the one that did it to you he kind of is the one who did it to me i know dude he'll, i don't know he'll, he'll, love, he'll, love, he'll love to hear you say that <laughs> yeah, he'll love yeah to i know I, I, I mean i'm not scared of him at all right now but i just like at that one moment i was just like holy shit i'm running well when he's an olympic gold medalist you're racing yeah. against you yeah. kind of think like I mean, okay I ran, yeah i ran this against him pretty good i ran against him at uh um at the prelims and i didn't even think about it i was just like going right in front of him and i didn't really give a fuck but just like at the final, final just like, like yeah. final just she, got she gets me. serious, you know, yeah. 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 Um, and it's just part of being a rookie, I guess. Yeah. You know, just, just learn. Yeah, and you raced the trials in your Brooks kit, right? I did, yes, yeah. So is, that what, is that what you kind of announced? Is right before yes, that? Yes, I actually announced it like an, while I was warming up. I like told my everybody, <laughs> my coach and so on, I was like, yeah, while I'm warming up, just post it out. Really? See what happens. Yeah. That's interesting. Wow. I don't think I've heard anybody doing that before. Well, yeah. Wait, was that before the, the first, first round? Yeah. That was... At the first round, okay, I was warming up for my first round, um, and that was my debut. With so my, you, so you were already wearing the kit at that point. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Damn, I signed. Cool. I signed about like a week before the first round. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I kind of like it's weird. I had to like keep it a secret too. And that tweet came out. I was like, oh, if he goes, if he goes to Brooks instead of on, that's a major L. And I was just like laughing my ass. Off. <laughs> Wait, so just like a random. It's, I don't know who it was. No, it was. It was I, I think was it. It wasn't track gym. It was somebody that like likes to stir stuff. Yeah, on Twitter, he had like Salazar as like I remember, photo. I remember looking oh, at that, Gosh, and I think you already. We already knew. Gosh. We knew being in the inner ear of it that you would sign with Brooks. Yeah, and we laughed at that because I knew you would laugh. At, yeah, like, it, was, like, it was so. Well, funny. wait till you come to the US trials and see me running a Brooks kit. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's, just that's, how, that's just how it goes sometimes. That's just yeah. the way it goes. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's cool though. That's um, Oh miss anything else we haven't covered? Um, wait, Westfly? yeah, Westfly. 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 You, you overlap with that, which I think Westfly is an interesting thing. Where I think like probably out of everyone listening to this, like maybe ten percent of people will know what it is. Like it's yeah. pretty small, but I think people know them, but they choose to ignore them because like they just don't want to give them credit. That's anymore. what I do yeah. mostly. Yeah. Like if I'm being honest, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's I mean, this is the reality of it. Yeah, I thought it was a group. I actually thought it was like gonna be. Well, like what a, is it? A training Do you want to explain it? <sighs> Good God, it's really hard to explain. It's just my friend, roommate, best friend named Everett Smolder. Shout out to Everett. He Shout followed us Everett. on Instagram yeah, yesterday. Yeah, he follows Instagram. Thanks for that follow. follow. We appreciate it. <laughs> Do you follow you? He probably already followed Jordy. Yeah. Jordy doesn't pay attention to his social media because, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's above that. Yeah, he told me oh. yesterday he doesn't really like technology that much. Jordy? Yeah. Yeah, he's kind of living in like the. I said I don't know anything about technology. Don't know anything we about technology. Sorry, sorry. that's what it was. Yeah. Is. He's like, Jordy's like, this is my first time here. Yeah. What's a laptop? <laughs> I think it was my first time in Best Buy. <laughs> that's, where, that's where Ollie lives. Ollie lives for Best Buy. Dude, taking like taking Ollie, Ollie, Ollie oh, walk into Best Buy. Taking those guys to Best like, Buy is the most dangerous thing. Dude, that's actually like, what happened. Like a thousand dollar worth of stuff. Not even a joke. Like well, we went. That's how. That's how we <laughs> bought our Ollie really nice Sonos. A, Ollie tried to buy an eight hundred dollars sub yesterday. Luckily, they were out of stock. Good thing okay. That, that would have been myself. a good purchase, though. Let me. That would have been a good. Let purchase. me defend. That was my, planned. Let me defend myself. Okay, yeah, I am trying to give everyone a good time at this party. The good time is you get the right surround system. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. True. I'm just referring to when true. I get it. When I get it, you guys are like, oh, this is. This no, awesome. no, no, it is. I'm referring to the Sonos that downstairs. What is it called? The Arc. The Arc, yeah, the, the big, big one. one. The big bopper. Like we didn't. We went into Best Buy. I don't know why we were going in there, but they had one on sale because well, they, it was a the, return. And all he's like, I gotta buy this. Yeah, the, st the story behind it was so we have a small beam, the compact one upstairs. So Morgan and I had that in our apartment. That was like the one thing I bought with some price money. I was really excited about. And then when we went back to Best Buy. Um, one of the ladies was actually carrying 
the massive sonar arc, which is like great for like it's just a how big much does it speaker. cost normally? Usually it's about I think eight hundred and fifty, eight hundred sixty dollars. Expensive. So it was marked down to about six fifty. Yeah, that's um, a good deal. Because what yeah. happened is the brand new speaker had never been used. The guy that bought it wanted the black one, not the white one, because there's two different colors. Yeah, and I didn't care because it was marked down, and I thought this would be great. great so value. I, I straight away grabbed it off her, and you were losing money not buying that. Yeah, but then I get ridiculed for it because you know that's just the way the way the world no, works. No, we love we love it. We love you. But um, yeah, sure we do. So Best Buy. Best Buy. We're talking about Wes Fly. Give us we're the. Yeah, sorry, we just went from Best Buy to Wes Fly. I was trying to like Wes Fly, Best Buy. Easy, easy to that's a great collab. Yeah. We should try and do that next year. Um, so yeah, explaining Wes Fly. Um, so he's he Everett has this like image of like, um, running, is, like people show running as like a very friendly sport with like no rivalry mm -hmm. in a way true and um he kind of in a way like wanted to change that he wanted to show like the true image of like what actually goes on in running and in training is that like we train thinking about somebody else that we're trying to beat really bad that's usually how I image i was like you know if i'm doing really bad in a workout i always just think of this like whoever is like i gotta beat this person so i gotta go through this workout if i want to beat that person who do you normally think about um, uh, just put you on the spot. It depends, <laughs> usually, of who I'm like actually competing against. So it was actually Cole Hawker, like yeah. all of this this whole like other season. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but now I kind of don't really like have anyone in mind because like yeah. I, I don't just know what my season is gonna bit. be like. That's fair. It's gonna um, be. It's gonna be. Um, it's gonna be Josh Kerr. Josh Kerr. Yeah. yeah. Whoever Josh Kerr is. Uh, I mean, but he doesn't really train in Seattle. Does he? No, he lives with his girlfriend in Albuquerque. Yeah. He's really allergic to Seattle that. apparently. What does that mean? It means he doesn't like to go there. Wait, his girlfriend, his girlfriend lives in Albuquerque? Well, she's doing yeah. medical. He, he, he literally, he told she's me. She's about to be a Olympics. plastic surgeon. Yeah, so he told me the Olympics. Yeah. He's like, what? He's like, in that, it's like, I'm going to be the trophy husband. I'm just going to nice. be that guy that's I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun. She makes all that the does bank. Sound like you a just lot wake fun. up, Shout out, go, for you go golfing, yeah. come back, hang out with your buddies, Yeah. do nothing. Hey, yeah. no, he's, he's, he knows how to do it. So I that's why the group about. spends so much time in Albuquerque. That's why they go it to training camp, I think, because he's, he's already Josh, <laughs> Josh Kerr's got to hang out with his girlfriend. I think they spent time in Albuquerque even before Josh was on the team. I think it's because, like, winter gets really bad in Seattle. Yeah, just and like you can't really rains. train there. Well, I mean, the weather's season. bad in general, isn't it? It's like it rainy snow. and cold. And yeah, I, I guess I don't know. Comparatively to most altitude locations. Yeah, yeah. but I, I don't know. I've only I was only in Seattle for two weeks when it was actually like you know nice weather. It was like 80, 70 degrees, no rain at all for two weeks, hmm. which I was surprised. I thought it was gonna be raining all all week, but um, but I don't know. Yeah. I'll let you know what the true weather of Seattle is. Yeah, like give us give us an update. Yeah, right, I'll let, give you guys an update. Let's stop interrupting you and let's hear okay. what Wes Fly is. So Everett. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Everett. Oh, Businessman. Business entrepreneur. Man, yes. So he actually Quick is. Summary. Yeah. He does have that <laughs> mindset of wanting to be like can, you can tell. of an entrepreneur. Like he wants tell. to like, you know, invest in stuff. He wants to take like Is this still a thing? Like Dogecoin? Kind of. He he actually yeah. used to be a day trader. He I made a lot of money. Hundred percent see that. Yeah. Um, so he so his target, I think, was like Tim Man, of like they're like, oh, like, you know, we like care about the mental mind and you know all that stuff that they do, which I don't really pay attention to anymore. Sorry yeah. guys, but like he also just saw that like the way they're ta they're talking doesn't really reflect on how they're performing on the track. Mm -hmm. So you're talking so social media versus performance. Yes. So he kind of in a way was like they're they're wrong. Like they should not be doing that. Yeah, so uh, he was kind of like, someone has to call them out. Yeah, someone has to call them out. So he did that. And, like, I think Everett and Westfly was the beginning of the downfall of... You, you of give Tom them that Swartz credit. Too, you man. give them the credit. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, if if you really... Like, he really called them out, like, hard. He went hard. And he, yeah. only, like, he only spoke the truth, too. He never really said that's anything that's a lie. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, when it's the truth, man, people resonate with yeah. that, honestly. So, I remember seeing him... Do something that involved like throwing a watermelon off a yes off the roof, and it was like <laughs> sand pass. Yeah. It wasn't sand. I was in that video because I was like driving by, and I was like, uh, "What was the it? fuck is going on right <laughs> now?" Wait, who threw the watermelon down? Uh, he, Everett. Everett, Everett, Everett threw the watermelon down. I think he had Joey's like face on it, or Sam. I think it was it? Sam. And he also had like cans of like that Dr. Threw. Pepper and he's like throwing it, like hitting it with a baseball and he had Sam Parsons face on it. It's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. It's very funny. <laughs> I mean, he's definitely like he's made a, a small wave. Is West Fly? Yeah. It is still a thing. Yeah. Now they're, uh, it's a little, it's like, it's not as aggressive as it used to be oh, back friendly. then, which I'm, I'm happy about that right now because I mean like you can't really beat up a dead horse. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, if yeah. you're talking the truth, you're talking the truth, and then move on. Yeah. I mean, like obviously, two men have dealt with a situation, mm -hmm. and then they've hired they've someone else, and they're trying yeah. to, 
you know, move on yeah. to that, perform and, and you know, p- p- portray their brand yeah. the way they they want to. And yeah, I mean, yeah. like that sounds like he's, he might move on to us. Who knows? Yeah, he's, he, <laughs> might, he might go. <laughs> he might move on to Brooks Beast. Beast. Yeah, <laughs> good Brooks God. Beast, yeah. He knows a lot about me and I hope yeah. he does not. Yeah, and he actually, <laughs> I mean, up. he actually like ran really well. Like he broke four and stuff. He like, is yeah. really good. He's a good runner. And he, the, the other thing too that people really don't know about Everett is that He's different than what he like shows the people yeah. he's on social media. A lot of people yeah. like that. Actually. See, okay, yeah. see, this is the thing though, because like when you say that, I think initially, like, there's like a stigma to that, like people like think that's a bad thing, right? Mm. But as someone who's like, like I think about content and that I I don't have an issue with that at all. Yeah. Like I think if you, I think that's just kind of like the way the world is going, where it's becoming things are becoming more confused between like social media and real life and that. But like the thing is, if you watch that stuff, you know he's putting on a performance you know mm-hmm. he's trying to be entertaining and that he's like it's a show like if you watch that and you think like oh this guy is like you can think he's a dick or whatever yeah. i don't know for doing that but like you can tell like it's, it's a show mm-hmm. he's acting he's so acting. yeah he's acting, and that's yeah. the thing like if you're if you go up to drama we, i thought we just said that that's what he didn't like about 10 man is being different on social media to real life Mm. In, in in a way it's like i think what he like good like i said George. earlier is that like good point, that was a good point the way point. the way they're showing themselves on social media doesn't reflect on how they're performing on the track but however everett is doing that yeah. he's saying that he's gonna do good and he's gonna break forward and he goes and does break for he doesn't say oh like i can't even really think of like something i haven't really followed tim man in so long but like the one thing the one thing that like i don't want to like this on Tim Man because I actually like respect them as a brand and I like all the individuals. But the one thing that I always found really interesting is that like their bio, I don't know if it's still this, but their bio was pushing the sport of track and field forwards on and off the track. And I would look at that. I'd be like, okay, off the track, a hundred percent. Like they're like completely like groundbreaking what they're doing in terms of selling yeah. merch. Cream. But like on they the track, how, how are you going to say, how are you going to say you're pushing the sport forwards on the track? They're also from what I like, believe is not. the first group to actually start like, like putting, training as a professional runner on like social media on youtube and like yeah. it's more actually getting more race. audience no. and all that kind of stuff you gotta give him which is like yeah i mean like yeah. in in a way like tim man tim like westfly existed because of tim man yeah in a way, if tim man didn't happen westfly would have probably never happened yeah. Yeah. because like no one really made that so, sort of content yeah and then like once tim man happened then everything else started kind of like going on and then everybody yeah. started branching off zach tim- levitt happened ryan trahan the athlete, spe- like the special athlete, and so Morgan on. McDonald. The special athlete. I haven't heard that. <laughs> the <laughs> special athlete. The special athlete. Uh, <laughs> Almost your teammate, but yeah. uh, uh, no, no longer. No he's, longer. He's no He'll longer. be living in Seattle. I'm pretty sure. Though. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you'll I'll be, be able to do around. some 200 meter reps with him. Does uh does Westfly like make any money? Does it sell merch or anything or not? Really? Now they are. Yes, they actually drop made a website on September 8th, which is Everett's birthday, and now Happy they're birthday. selling hats and stuff. So that's cool. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I like that. Like, I mean, I just like, I don't know, like some of it's maybe a bit toxic or whatever, but yeah. I don't know. Anything that like can make the sport more entertaining, more exciting, more like professional. I don't know. That's a weird way of saying it, but I, I, I respect the hustle. Yeah. And like, that's essentially what we're doing here as well. Like, it's just like trying to, cause like the, what the issue of running is, it's so boring in so many ways. And like the way the sport is presented like to a normal person, I think is pretty boring, like compared to other sports. And so, but we, we do get an inside lens of like how it could be entertaining yeah, to people. Yeah, it could be and entertaining. And how we can create a discourse and of rivalry. I think these things yeah. are moving yeah, towards what I think that. actually needs is like some sort of like excitement of like, I want to see those two people like compete against each other. Yeah. yeah. Because I know like they've got something kind of like off the track in a way. Yeah. So no, I but, mean we saw it last year, yeah. a bunch of rivalries. But like, the problem is that like I'm friends with everybody, you know. Well, like same. I try to be friends with everyone. Like <laughs> that, I don't really have anyone that's like that's the thing. I people fucking hate that person. Yeah. Like oh, no. So yeah, so you, you can like you can kind of on the track be not an asshole, but you can have that rivalry and can yeah. have that kind of competitiveness. Then off the track, you can just be best mates yeah. at a bar. Having that's a beer. why. That's it, what people yeah. look like, in a way. Like see. I don't like Arkansas, like the team. Uh, I hate <laughs> Arkansas, but like I still hang out with the team yeah. and like. We talk to each other before or after the race and so on. Like, you know, I meet them at some parties every now and then and just like hang out with them and so on and but that, talk and yeah. laugh and crack jokes and stuff. That's but what like, I was going to say. It's, it's like, so hard to it needs meet to be someone. The, no, it needs to be the team rivalry is what, yeah, is what you what want. Is, yes, you, yeah. want, you want team rivalry because individual rivalry is difficult. Like, I'm sure it's the same even in like the pinnacle of that, like NFL. I'm sure a bunch of those guys are like friends and they train together in the off season. But yeah. the team rivalry, like that's always going to mm-hmm. be there. And that's something that you can easily get behind. So if we could find that's a way. It should be more pro events. 
Yeah. Like this cross country meet. That yeah. We might do. Or yeah. like the Ikaden thing. More like of that would be so teams, good. Teams, pro teams against other pro teams. There should be like more pro teams too because like, yeah. how many is there? Like six? Five? Not too it's many. Probably more than you think, honestly. There is more than you think, but it's the like. big ones. Yeah. But they don't all need to be big. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like the, it, like the, we could talk about this for so long and I'm sure yeah. we will a lot in the future, but like the sport doesn't incentivize that and people will like go towards in, like the incentives. So that's why you have a group like Bauman who, um, shout out to Bauman. Sorry for ragging you guys on, on you guys last week, but that's why like they, they act in the way they act because they get, they are incentivized for performance at the world champs and Olympics. Like, and that's, and that's everything they do is planned for that. If you could find a way to incentivize team competition and you could build up team these brands these teams oh that'd be so, like that'd be so much easier yeah. to get behind and like support a good, it, yeah good thing just put it in someone's contract yeah people would do it yeah i mean maybe like Somehow, yeah. i think it's like if the brand itself starts to like you know in a way begin some sort of rivalries against each other mm. then it will be like kind of like exciting in a way mm. but like as a this, brand yeah. that's like a worldwide brand like you can't really you, do that yeah. that's the issue with how dominant Nike yeah. is in the world stage particularly Diamond Leagues you see majority like I mean obviously different groups maybe you yeah. get them under a different label mm-hmm. it can help I mean like use an example like F1 like F1 has great rivalries between the teams yeah. and even in between Formal the actual drivers I, mean, I was just thinking about that yeah, yeah. Red Bull I think it's Mercedes right now yeah and like even like the, the, like the middle team oh that's yeah. why Netflix has done such a great job with yeah. that show is they showed the rivalries even between the middle teams yeah. that aren't competing for the win but they're competing against each other yeah. and trying to push next year Formula 1 is going to be even better because all the cars are going to be like equal in a way so yeah. it's like only talent is what's going to yeah, matter yeah it's going to be the point, driver so. which is going to be really interesting yeah. dude listen to this guys because we're, we're all into F1 here. We'll eat here. He's into F1, but he's never seen Drive to Survive. Never seen it. Interesting. So, how crazy is that? That's how it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. like, I've, I've seen it a lot. And I've like, you know, a lot of people, like a lot of like F1, like Instagram accounts and like YouTube channels, like talk about it and then joke about how like, you know, Netflix is going to like make this more dramatic than what it actually like looks like. Which they do. Yeah. Which they do. Yeah. From what they say. But I, I still like in a way I haven't really had the time to sit down and actually watch it. Um, which I'm watching a lot of random shows, but I should definitely start watching that. Like I've watched like what team do you support? Um, I kind of am a big, big McLaren fan just because they're of the, so, the they're, they're, so, they're yeah. so easy to support right now. <laughs> That's man. a good answer. Like, I know, like, right? Norris, yeah. uh, but I'm excited to see what uh, George Russell is gonna do next year because so I mean exciting. he's got the talent, and him going to Mercedes, being teammate with. Well, that's the thing. If you set up a driver like that, he's going to be... Yeah, they they the want him to beat Lewis is Hamilton. He, is he the yeah. next Lewis Hamilton? Is he the next is Lewis Hamilton? Hamilton? That's the question. Well, this was Mercedes did a while ago with Lewis Hamilton and whatever the other guy name was. Valtteri Bossa? Valtteri no. Bossa, yeah. Well, the, the one before him, Nico Rosberg. No, Nico, that's yeah, what it that, is. Yeah, that was the yeah. thing. Like... That's that's actually a crazy story. We should didn't they crash? Yeah, at some so, point? so they I think it was huge I think it was like I don't know what year exactly, 2014, 2015, 2016. They were both Mercedes and Mercedes was a dominant car. Yeah. Uh, but they were both it wasn't like a Lewis Hamilton Bottas dynamic. It was both of them yeah. going for it, trying to win and they were like absolute bitter rivals. Like there's so many funny videos yeah. of them like being just absolutely pissed but at each other. They were like best friends when they were little, like yeah. go-karting and stuff. And like, it was so intense. And Rosberg won that year and then he retired. And then he retired. Cause yeah. he, he That's said, I, I like, I listened to his podcast and stuff and he had to do, it was so taxing on him to compete with Hamilton. Like he, he was really into like, he said he had to get like so much like, like therapy, like sports psych, psychology, like all this stuff that it was just not sustainable. He's like, all right, I won my title. Now I'm out. Now Hamilton can just like take over. Imagine if that's like track and field, like Jakob Ingebrigtsen <laughs> announces <laughs> next day. He's like, so I've literally, I'm 20 years old. I've been training professional for 10 years. I've done exactly like the height, the highest point in our sport. Yeah. I've done it. So like competing against Tim, like one of the, one of the best middle distance runners. Yeah. As well, like just I'm done. Like, yeah. What, what like what else am I gonna do? I'm now I can enjoy my life. That'd be pretty the boring. Same way as James Hunt. Who? From Ferrari. Oh, that yeah. was yeah. competing against Nicky Lauda. Yeah. You yeah. ever watched that movie? Uh, is it Rush? Yeah. Rush, yeah. I, I, I have. That's a, it's a yeah, great film. It's a good movie. Yeah. He also did the same thing. He said, I just wanted to win a world yeah. title. And that's all what I needed in my yeah. life. I And, and probably right probably after. another dynamic with that sport is how dangerous it is, I guess. Mm, yeah. There's a lot yes. of adrenaline in that one. And how much money you make that you can do it for one year, win a world championship, and you're set for life. So it's not, it's a Try little bit, it. it's a little bit different. Yeah, you cannot do that. Like maybe Jakob's probably, could, I mean, Jakob I mean, could build, it out. He's yeah. built such a big brand. I mean, like people have told me yeah. that he's the LeBron of Norway. Yeah. And Carlson Warholm, who's an unbelievable yeah. athlete, who's very exciting, very entertaining to watch, isn't even as big as, as Jakob. Like Jakob has that big platform, probably from the doc. Uh, yeah, the, the TV show yeah, or whatever. Yeah. In a way, like runners could 
potentially make a lot of money if rivalry was still a thing. Like, yeah. if, if it's a thing. Because it's, it's more exciting for the audience. Well, the audience wants to have a group. Yeah. Like, Brooks Base first, OAC. Yeah. Or they they want OAC to see, or... like, like, you can't just be like, oh, I'm supporting everyone. It's like, yeah. in a way, like, you need to be like football where it's like, you know, like the Bills fans, like they are absolutely yeah. toxic. And they hate that. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's why, so, the, but pa that's passion. Yeah. That's, that's the thing, which I think going back to like the being friendly thing is like, if you're, if like everyone just like, like at, at some point you have to, if you want to be super, super liked, you have to kind of accept being disliked yeah. by a different crowd. Yes. That's kind of the reality. Yeah. You know, and like, and track and field is just so like in the middle. Yeah. Just so like, uh, yeah, he's cool. Like that's the one thing with like, say the US trials, you have a lot of guys there, very nice guys, very good guys. Any one of them wins, most of the crowd would be like, oh, that's great. That's yeah, that's crowd. yeah. Everyone would like. No one's cheer. cheer. So like, oh, and, yeah. Know, Willie didn't win, or oh, you know. I mean, your coaches, obviously. Yeah, but and, like then your close friends, yeah. but not the not the actual fan yeah. base. Itself, yep. Which, is which would be fun if there was some sort of like a fan base that like yeah. you know certain section is like we're wearing Brooks gear only. And then yeah. the section we're like, we're wearing on stuff only yeah. in a way, you know, that'd be kind of like fun. Yeah. But, yeah. and like, if, if just like merch also is like a thing, like Brooks beast merch, it should be or like odd, more like of that. OAC, like merch and stuff like that. Cause if like Barman has that. If the teams you know? were more separate from the brands, I think you could do more yeah. cool stuff like that. Like if it was a more separate entity, but they're so attached and then the brands have their own plans and the brands also have to maintain their squeaky clean yes. images. Yes. So they can't really do that. Um, let's just take a quick pause because I need to check the audio is still working. The audio, I need to actually just put a setting so my thing doesn't turn off. But uh, um, we've gone on, on so many tangents here. The only other thing that I want to talk about in regards to Ole Miss was the thing that you mentioned with the new, is it NIL? Is it NLI? 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 NLI. No, that's a that's a letter of intent. Is it what am I talking about? I'm, I'm talking about the new. What are you guys I'm talking trying to. About? I'm trying to talk about the money. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Oh yes, the money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. It's just like you know the the new NCA thing where like athletes can like you know make money on their own and actually get paid. But like their universities or whoever. Yeah. And so actually, tell us, tell us the old miss you, you were telling us before. So from what I've heard is that our AD is, from what I believe, is trying to be the first kind of like person to like start, you know, paying the athletes and stuff like that. Since like now we're allowed to do that. Um, and I think athletes right now at the University of Mississippi are going to be counted as university employee where they get, every single I think every single athlete does. Um, so they all get paid exactly the exact same amount. Um, they have to pay taxes on this stuff and so on. So it's basically like you're working at that yeah. point. Does um, almost have a bunch of money? We do, yeah. Yeah, the answer is yeah. It's an SEC school. I don't think there's a poor fun. SEC school. Um, but Plus yeah, it's just... You could not do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, I think that's one of the things no that... That's one of the criticisms with this stuff that's going on is that it's going to make the inequality so much worse because some schools, like now in terms of recruiting, it's just like things were already unbalanced, yeah. but now it's even more unbalanced. Yeah. It's so like you think about it in a way, it's like, oh, I can yeah, go Arizona to used school. to try and pay people. Yeah. And yeah, I could illegally, go like, now they can just straight up yeah. do in it. In a way, you'll be like, I could go to this school and get paid like 8K a year. Or I can go to this one and get paid nothing. It's like that sure. will take care of rent and everything. Can you actually right do that recruiting? Is, I mean, you know, I think right now I you can. Any of the fine print that would be. Well, I I know like obviously there's a lot of people. This is the the funny thing seeing this all come out was nearly every athlete in college was becoming a Barstool athlete, which I thought was interesting. Well, that was kind of like yeah, that's yeah. like, like, kind of a joke. Yeah. Also, get like, you only get like a t-shirt or something. Yeah. People yeah. getting yeah, like, you know, like, like uh, bad sponsorships, like uh, glasses, like all these mm -hmm. cool. different things, which is great. You know, like they're getting the, um, you know, the they're getting rewarded kind of for name and likeness. Yeah. Get, get um, support like that, which is awesome. But the interesting thing would be like a school like Texas, right? Oh, it's so like have so much if money. you compete against so Texas to like to say SEC a small now. school yeah. like uh, <laughs> like a good like Villanova and Texas like money wise for say the big sports basketball and Villanova also has quite football a lot of money. they do yeah that's it's, a bad, it's, that's it's, a bad it's, example is, is it a private school yeah. yeah. things or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah they, they, they've so got, got a lot of money would be a school like compared to Texas that would just wouldn't be able to compete Stony Brook Stony Brook there we go <laughs> Toledo so, <laughs> you wouldn't be able to compete against schools like that so the inequality no. like Morgan said just gets worse mm -hmm. and then schools are like not they're, like their programs would probably suffer severely from yeah, it. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be so interesting because well, if, like who knows how it's gonna play out. But with that said, like still, I'm definitely a big supporter of this because yeah, like going through college, it was always like 
like man these these footballers these basketballers are just getting so fucked like in terms of how much money they're bringing into the school yes. versus how much they're yes. seeing. So it's like, it's good that they can move towards getting compensated for what they're doing. It's like, scary too for those athletes because of the, the risk of injury. Like yeah, the career be could it. be done mm-hmm. before it even starts. That's true. You have some of the best players, maybe even in the country playing in college. And then all of a sudden they have a massive injury. They make no money. Yeah. They're done. They can't even go professional and, ma- and make, you yeah. know, like... Like they make the university. Yeah, it's like think about um, what's that one basketball player? Williams, something Williams. The guy that ran. Mr. Played, Williams played for the Dukes, and then now he's uh, at Zion Williams. Oh just yeah. Think about how much money he could have made in college. Yeah. If he was just you know getting like all the sponsorship and stuff right now. Yeah, it's crazy. But he would have been a millionaire before he even got to like the <laughs> league. <laughs> no. And the amount of money made for the NCAA March Madness. Yes. He could have even been making money in high school. Which is crazy to yeah. think. Like, what if uh, high school is going to be... Uh, high school is allowed to make money now? I don't even know. The, I don't, I don't even know the rulings, to, to be honest. No. But... I have no fucking idea. NCAA overall just has a bunch of rules that just does not make any sense. Yeah. But there's rules. I yeah. I remember... I mean, in Ole Miss, actually, is a school that's, like, been under heat in recent history. We were, yes. Um, Compliance-wise. I think our... Um, I think, in a way, like, our old uh, football coach, he... Um, Hired escort service for like recruits. Nice. Or something like that. Do so, <laughs> hashtag, <laughs> hashtag good for the sport. Good for the hashtag sport, good for the yes. sport. <laughs> and, uh, and there was a bunch, I think it was like a bunch of other like, <laughs> other coaches too were like taking money too and stuff like that. So it was just like a bunch of like things that happened. Uh, but, you know, just thank God that everything is Because I remember like 2017, I did a couple of races in Europe and I did one with um, Robert Demanic and I think he won and I came second. And they handed us prize money like straight away, and he's like, "I can't accept this." Like he was, he was like, because apparently in response, Ole Miss's compliance was so tight. Like after yes, that happened, all that kind of stuff, they yeah. were like so tight, and he was like, "I can't take this money." And I was just like, oh, "I think I'll just yeah. take it." See what happens. <laughs> <laughs> See yeah. what happens. In a way, you can only take the exact amount that will cover for your whole trip. Yeah. So whatever you spent out of your pocket. You can only take that much out of like so your, you your prize money. Conveniently, you go like stay at a exact amount that the trip. Costs. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> conveniently, stay at a five star hotel or yeah. room service. You know? That's the thing. All... It's pretty easy to 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 get some receipts for your trips if yep. you want to if you want to make it so, like that, which is pretty much what I did. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, Miss Man. Um, hopefully, that? that's gonna be so crazy if they're actually. So, you said a number before, right? I think they're. I think they're getting paid about like twenty eight hundred dollars. For two months or every month or something like that, or somewhere around. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I'm pretty sure the there's some sort of like big check like that coming in for every athlete. What's well, NIU's which response is to this? Great. <laughs> don't ask me, bro. That'd be that's so good. Yeah. So happy for them. Yeah. I'm not exactly yeah. sure I, 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 about I this nothing. whole like that's numbers wild. and stuff like that, but it's I'm pretty crazy. sure it's somewhere around there. I wonder. So I wonder what like the individual deals that people are signing are like. Like I know I think the biggest one is that. Um, is an LSU gymnast girl who's like really big on TikTok. Do you know who that is? No, but her I name's like LSU's Olivia. Really good at like her name's like Olivia. Is that the Asian girl? No. And now we yeah. move to TikTok. She's uh yeah, she's a big TikTok star, Olivia Dunn, and she's just like, I, I'm gonna see how many Instagram followers. She, but apparently she signed like a million dollar deal. Do you, or something. Do, you uh, do you know a her from TikTok or from gymnastics? Good God. Uh, I'm a big gymnastics fan. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I just just love the sport. It just athletically. <laughs> Fantastic. She's got she got 1.3 million followers. That's yeah. pretty good. That's not bad. I don't think any track athlete in the NCAA has that many followers. Nah. I wonder There's what no the most way. is. Maybe a girl. It's definitely not a guy. Yeah. No, no girls. Who's that basketball player from Kentucky? Kentucky. No, UConn. Yeah, yeah. UConn. Yeah. yeah she she, nice she had a huge following. Sorry. The, the mic thing is like <laughs> yeah. really yeah. annoying. Yeah, we, gotta around. we gotta get another mic, I guess. Yeah. We're gonna have guests out here. Um. Yeah, and I guess that's kind of also another thing about the social media that you were going to talk oh, about. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So another topic that we wanted to talk about today, special request from Ollie, is social media just generally. One of Ollie's talents, which Jordy and I love testing him on, is Ollie knows, like, how many followers, like, everyone has. Yeah. Like, he, like, how he'll, 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 he'll... Huh? How many do I have? Uh, oh, don't... Oh, don't <laughs> <do this. laughs> right on the spot. Um... Come I'm on. pretty sure it's like eight to nine thousand, isn't it? No, it's not. I wish I have that. I don't have that. No. I, I wanted to aim for higher, so I yeah. wanted to feel. Better. I think it should be. So, I think it's somewhere like. Six? 
No, 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 no. Like lower. lower. I think lower. it's like 4,300. Okay. See, that, that'll area. grow. That'll grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just coming out of college. But because Ollie will come. come on this podcast, will probably double. Yeah. 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 Ollie will come Follow and be like. On Instagram. Waleed hey, just... M. Solomon. <laughs> Shout out, man. We'll Shout put out. a little pop up. It'll go. Yeah. Boop, we'll, we'll put a pop up for you. So yeah. Follow. But yeah, Ollie will come and be like, hey, this person gained like. 3.6k followers today and we're like how do you know that man it's so I'm impressive a stats man. i'm a stat <laughs> yeah. no nah, it's i just i find i think the reason why i wanted to bring this up is i find it so interesting between uh male athletes and female athletes on social media influencing and profiting off it yeah because a male athlete yeah will not profit off social media as well as a female athlete in this sport, yeah. someone that is able to market themselves so well very good looking yeah. and all the horny guys in the world yeah. will like comment subscribe well this is the thing that like talked about on it was like someone on team boss said this to me and this was just like the this was like the the switch like just turning on like this made it all make sense the difference between men's and women's in distance running and instagram is that female at like distance runners have essentially the ideal female body male distance runners do not have the ideal dad bod <laughs> the ideal yeah, body the dad bod so like for females like they can just they can just post a picture of them in their running gear like yeah. every second day and people are just gonna love it. Well, that's the one thing seeing it, um, particularly at the Olympics, was girls wearing their Olympic gear and rolling up their pants, rolling up certain aspects to obviously look like more like a bikini or more yeah. like a, a pic like that. There's and, a lot uh, of thirsty people out there. Yeah, like, and and that's what people <laughs> want to like. The people want to like that, and they, it's a thirst trap. Like I and wish it, I could and it, post it helps that. their brand because then all of a sudden like a brand will be like, okay, this person's a massive following. We can yeah. get our product yeah. out there. All you have to do is shout it out. We could, you know, Whereas but a guy can't pull us, up their pants yeah. and expect to get, you know, pulled so, up to the crack of their ass and expect to so get So what do you uh, think a followers. guy should do? Well, you gotta, you gotta be like funny. You like Craig Engels. Yeah. yeah. That's you gotta, true. Yes. Two, you gotta be like Craig Engels. That's that true. I know. Like obviously you gotta be the best in the world like Jakob Inger Brisson mm -hmm. yeah. and have that following because you are the best in the world or you'd be like Craig where you have kind of that persona and that charisma yeah, the the persona, to get man. people excited Does about it. what he's but doing. But it's the thing, you can't you can't really fake that. You could, but like it's just it's so, very hard. It's so hard no. because like when you go and you meet people, you have to act like the way you're acting on social I can media as well. It's very tiring. Which is like yeah. not yeah, you can't really do that at all. No. Like I'm but not if gonna you, go if you're your genuine self and it's entertaining, yeah. then you're just gonna be successful from it regardless. That's with true. with a girl, she can be like we <laughs> you're Degas. So it's dying. a sensitive to topic for him because yeah. he feels strongly about this. He's very strongly about yeah. it. But like, for example, so with Morgan's, yeah. <laughs> How's with, your Instagram with Morgan's old group, Team Boss, majority of those women have a massive following on they social do. media. Huge. And they capitalize on it because... As they should. As they yes. should. They're all very good looking. But massive yeah, credit and, to them. And you like, see what they post and the content that they get out. That's what interests me because I'll look at... Say Jordy Beamish, for example, massive <laughs> Instagram guy. Why don't we just experiment with it? Ollie, Ollie just wants to be able to post thirst traps. That's essentially yeah. the. I'm scared post about that. posting. Ollie wants to be rewarded try, for his good looks. Try and do that for a month and see <laughs> if you gain followers. Every two days. I think I might like just lose <laughs> followers for that, but <laughs> give it a try though. You never know. Yeah, OnlyFans. OnlyFans. Try it out. OnlyFans potentially. There's a market there, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, actually, you're, I have an OnlyFans account. You do? Yeah, I do. Go follow me. What type uh, of we'll, content we'll, do you post? We'll put his link. We'll put the link in the uh, in the description. Right, we'll, it's gonna we'll pop up on right now. OnlyFans accounts. Yeah, that's that's it's but it's my Instagram. Life. Yeah, it's just yeah. I find that interesting, and I think obviously how would for female athletes they they know how to get that follow like they know what they have to do. Yeah. For a male to try and get that kind of following, you just have to be you, good. Yeah, you don't really know unless being yeah. if they get a massive yeah. figure in the sport. So what are you suggesting? Suggesting I'm suggesting that guys we wear tighter problem? clothing. No, I don't know what I'm suggesting. It's interesting clothing. because to bring it up. so you could either be Craig or Kipchoge. Exactly. There's nothing in the middle. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, could could you do something? Could I mean, you like the thing is, like, it's not. It's not form? a. It's like when, it's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, I don't know because. I, I guess we should get an uh, attractive girl on here and ask them about it. I'm sure it's not that bad to be able to make money by just posting hot pics of yourself, but. I don't know. I'm sure they would prefer to be rewarded more for their uh, performance performance and sure. other stuff. So it's not like necessarily the best I thing. I guess, yeah. As four males sitting on the couch, we yeah. probably don't have that insight. Yeah, we really just, don't know exactly what we're talking about yeah, when it comes and to that's, that. But that's just a bit, being a bit ignorant. But it's, I just found it interesting. Because it is interesting. It is. Like, it, it is helping particularly athletes that aren't maybe the best in the world mm -hmm. get the support that they need to kind of achieve their dreams, you know, like the financial yeah. or even product support. Yeah, and I think like it's it's changing like certain 
I don't know. I, I think everything is moving towards more of like an influencer model. I think like the term influencer doesn't have the stigma that it once had. It's just like everyone's just like accepted like this is the future. And so there's different ways of becoming an influencer. Obviously, the most typical one is just being really hot and just posting yes. hot pictures. But yeah, there's like, for example, like what I like what I try to do on YouTube, like I mean, it's not like my number one goal, but like getting more of a following is a good thing from yeah. that. I mean, I, I've I've done something that I've tried to help gain followers and I think it's worked. What was it? Get a dog. Get a dog. Get a dog. <laughs> Get Angus. Wait, so that's um, why you got Gus. Yeah, purely. Great for the Instagram I don't, clout. I, don't I don't like him at all. <laughs> he's a pain in the ass. No, nah, I love you. Nah. I love him. He's, he's great. I would die for this. this great animal. for the Instagram though. <laughs> I mean, There's I no just, doubt. yeah, I think that's one thing I tried. No, it's not. But it, <laughs> it, 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 did you notice yeah, that you yeah. gained followers once you got the dog? He's just, be- no, See, I got the dog when I was running really well. So I don't okay. know. It's my so running. So you don't know if it's your running dog. or the dog. What came okay. first? The chicken and the egg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, shout out to Angus. Yeah. Appreciate your support, brother. See, okay, this is the thing. It's like a girl can post a hot picture of them every day. You can post a picture of Gus every day on your story, yeah. Yeah. and people love it. Yeah, I, I've got good that. feedback from him. Yeah. He pretty well, much do that. You do it you because do I often. respect yeah. Gus's privacy. Okay? <laughs> I respect his privacy. You don't post without his consent. Exactly. I ask him. Wait, Jordy, what's your opinion on this? Because you have a strong well, opinion on this on the opposite side. I think you hate social media, right? I mean, uh, I'm not gonna, I think more the issue is that there are probably girls out there that deserve an equal following but don't want to post those photos. Yeah. And point. I feel like that is more of an issue. Yeah. Because they shouldn't have to do that to gain the influence or following that they deserve. There's yeah. one athlete I know That's what that I'm... is massively well known and doesn't have any social media. And it's Galen Rupp. Like, he has no social media presence. Well, he's so, the other thing not, you're no, talking about. True. He's like the best American distance runner. But still, yeah. he's still relevant. Like, I feel like even like... He's not nearly as relevant as he could be. But he account. just did it because he was fucking good at running. Yeah, but what I mean is he doesn't have a social media account. Like, no, he didn't, he didn't need one. to. He, he was also a bit before the time. Well, I think we yeah, agree. He was. He was good in high school. Oh yeah. yeah. We are, yeah. <laughs> are we agreeing or arguing? I can't even tell anymore. <laughs> why are you? Sh- he's up. Why are you, why are you yelling at me? Why are you oh, sure? I got hot. I got hot. I got hot. All right. Check in the the comments if whether this is gaining following or not. I got hot, and also I just I'm just working it for the you camera. You're pretty hairy. People listening. Um, do you buzz the bottom part? Yeah, I shave, but not the top part. I well, I you shave just, like I shave like around my snail trail. Use a uh, w- do you use what's it called the, the, uh, the, 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 the what's it called manscape? Use manscape. I've known him. Yeah, no, I shave like I shave like. I didn't like, know he was shirtless. Over here. Oh, uh, no, he, that surprise. was very that's very quick. Surprise! Are you gonna post that on hot. YouTube? Yeah. This is on oh YouTube. yeah, you're gonna have to like put sexual like, content. Yeah, sexual nah. content. I guess we're post not posting smoking, on sex. We'll, we'll post this we on a different <laughs> website. <laughs> Only fans. Yeah. Starts with a P. Uh, this is this, this this part of the Freedom podcast nip. only goes on our Patreon for the Patreon <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> Once the shirts come off, it goes only Patreon. How about Maybe that, that will uh, gain you a lot of followers. Right but yeah, so like, let's wrap up that topic. Yeah, yeah, what do we have to say? What's the what's the coffee cup? I gave my summary. You did. You did give a good summary. I I think. I don't know what to it's, say about it. I think it's going to change <laughs> yeah, the way about. we think about... Yeah, I'm just going to lean in closer. Yeah. I think it's going to change the way we think about... Um, Should have just been doing this the whole time. Marketing, yeah. right? Because cute. I noticed, particularly for athletes, um, they're just going to get more and more support from social media. I agree 100%. they're able to utilize it. And unfortunately, some athletes, like Jordy said, won't want to do that. Because think about this from a brand's perspective. If they can if they can way more easily track like through metrics on social media, like this person has X amount of followers and they post an ad for us and this increases our sales by X amount, I think they're going to be able to track it a lot easier and they're going to want to put more money in it because it's more reliable. Whereas like sponsoring runners is obviously awesome. Like it's, it, it definitely works in ways but it's just less tangible mm. it's so much harder to see like all right we're sponsoring this runner we'll give him like a four-year contract like what would that do to our sales yeah like, who knows you know that's true it's, it's a it's a huge gamble yeah it is yeah so yeah. so pretty much our con- that conclusion is get a lot of social media clout and you can run for your life maybe i don't know Unless you're really good, like Galen Rob, and you don't really. Or have just to get really good at running, yeah. which, yeah, is, yeah, which is our main goal. Like that, thing, yeah. that's which is our main goal. Just get really good at running. Yeah. All good right. Tip. Um, I kind of want to talk about two more things. Give it to us. I want to talk about TV shows, particularly that we like, and I think we'd like to discuss. There's one that 
we'll each start of watching that we haven't watched yet. Started that, yesterday, actually. That's yeah. actually gaining a lot of traction on social media. Squid Game? Media. Squid you know Game. called Squid Game? Yeah. So Squid tell game. us about what you've briefly saw. So I've, I've only watched the first episode so far. And um, in, in a way, like the beginning of it was like kind of sad. It just like, I'm probably going to spoil the first episode. But it's just like people who are like really in depth to other people. And they're unable to pay the depth or they have like huge like gambling problem. And then, knowing that they have a huge gambling problem, they decided to take the risk of playing this particular game with just, like, people that they have no idea who they are. They're like, you can play this game, and we will give you a certain amount of money for you to pay your debt and just live your life and never have to worry about money ever again. So they have 456 participants. And, like, you had to sign a weaver saying, like, you know, you can't just leave whenever you want. And if you lose, you get eliminated. But, like, they don't know what getting eliminated is. They think it's just, oh, you just leave. So they played this game called um, Red Green. So it's like uh, the dog is red. That was in the trailer. And then, yeah, you run, and then it says green, you stop. And if you move, you know, you obviously get eliminated. But in that show, you get shot. Yeah. <laughs> you just so that's like, a, that's, like a, that's like a child game. Yeah. So, you know, it was so terrifying because as soon as the first person got shot, people started running because they're like, you know, they're like, mm. fuck this shit. <laughs> but then like the machines, just like the machine guns just started like hammering at everybody, just shooting at them. And they're just like standing in this wall and you can see like, you know, blood on people's hand and they're just dragging down the wall. It's just, so it's a, just dead. It's a really creepy like look it at is, And it's just like disturbing. Yeah, I'm like, what is dead. this thing? The question like, I want to ask you is how do you think you'd do that game? Oh, good God. It. I don't you think I eat. No, honestly, I don't think I even, I'll be at the game, period. That's, that's, that's <laughs> actually the good answer. You know, like, I don't you have, don't like, an addictive game. personality. I don't gamble. I don't do yeah. all this stuff. So it's like, I shouldn't really be in that at all, you know, for me to be in that that's game. But goal. in the case I was in that game, I think I would probably be one of those people who end up getting shot because they freak out and you start <laughs> running like, around. Fuck this. I'm out Yo, fuck it. this shit. I'm going out. That's fair. But We're going to start watching this show and hopefully we get... Yeah. Like yeah. Apparently, it's really messed up, and it'll be interesting. It is, and Netflix is saying it's about to be like their number one, like most viewed show yeah. ever. Jordy said so. It's yeah, ma- it's amazing what type of shows like that just hit the. Yeah. Dude, those Korean like uh, what was that movie? The one the Oscar. Oh, uh, Parasite. Dude, yeah, it's so unbelievable. Good. That one. So good. Good. I've seen that one. So like disturbing. Yeah. But it was just it was just it was just something that hadn't been like that 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 kind of movie hasn't been popular before. Yeah. Like, when it when it was, I think a lot of people appreciated the kind of genre. And you ever watch Midsummer? Yes. Dude, that is a crazy, crazy movie right there. Like. Um, but uh, and then we'll move on to the other show that's very dear to Morgan, uh, Jordy and I's heart is Ted Lasso. Have um, you seen that? Nope. It's pretty good. Is it like so, uh, an oceanic kind of show? The no, one no you were it's American. Yesterday? It's pretty it's popular. Huh. It's American. It's like, what were you watching yesterday? Ted Lasso. That one. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I've never probably, seen it before. It's probably one of the biggest. Sh- oh, I, don't I think know, it's one of the biggest. Because on Apple, yeah. I don't know if that affects its yeah. numbers, but it's probably it's one of the biggest. One of the biggest shows on Apple for sure. I mean, how many how many thingies did it win? Won seven Emmys overall. I thought I said four, but isn't it seven? It was four for the um. Maybe got nominated for seven. I, could, I, I think it was. Yeah. Oh, is that the football coach? Yeah. That yeah. became a yeah. soccer coach. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. Yeah. In every episode. I want to because I think it's. Well, it's still coming out. Yeah, and uh, so Jordy's up to date. Episode nine. Wait, did you finish it last um, night? What do you think? Newest episode, the funeral yeah. funeral episode. Funeral episode. So there's three episodes left in the season. Okay. It's going. No, it's they're having twelve. Yeah, that was episode ten. No, it wasn't. It was episode nine. It was ten. Nine was Beard's fucking crazy night. Ten was the funeral. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, uh, so no, no don't ask me. <laughs> okay, so we have we have two episodes left of the show. Um, now the show is very much, particularly this season, it's opened up a lot, like a background on Ted and yeah, like kind of health. To. Yeah, because it had to kind of grow from because the plot gives, the plot of the show originally was very resolved by the end of season one, essentially. Yeah. So and this season's been really interesting. Um, I mean, I've enjoyed it very much as someone that kind of doesn't like the show doesn't have a villain, does it? There's not no real really. bad guy there. Like it's, it's very much people, people are critiquing season two because there's no p- person to root against. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Wait, who's that? Who's the, the, uh, the new coach, the one that was the gear guy before? Nate. Oh, Nate. Nate. Yeah, he's Nate. the worst. Yeah, Nate's, Nate's trying to take, taking a bad turn. Yeah, and this, like, he was so likable, and now he's just ugh, the worst. Well, it's, I think it's just interesting the way they um, project the father son relationship. Have you noticed sure. that his hair's, like, way more, like, gray, gray. silver? I wonder yeah. if that's on purpose or his hair just actually went gray. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what happens with it if they actually change it. But the father son relationship is interesting because you don't, you see everyone else's kind of father son relationship besides Ted's. And then you get into the climax. One of the climaxes in season two. Hopefully, there's not spoiling anything for anyone. But go watch the show, because um, we'll be talking about it a lot. If you, 
if you're interested. And um, I don't know. It was really interesting to go in the direction it has. And you can talk about specifics. I think it's going to be pretty boring if we don't talk okay. about specifics. Well, the specifics... Because <laughs> you're just saying <laughs> such general health. terms, right? The mental right. health side of it, I really like. I think it's interesting because, particularly in our generation, mental health has become much more of a thing we can talk about and kind of address yeah, and, and discuss. Definitely. And that's something that's... I think it's been a triumph in our generation and we've been able to say, like, I'm not okay, so I can I can go and talk to someone. It's, yes. Well, it's interesting. I don't know if I'd say it's a... Well, putting it as a triumph for the, in that specific regard well, is I think very accurate. Lasso, the way Ted Lasso Yeah, yeah, yeah because the triumph. thing is, which I talked about this on episode zero, actually, but, uh, like, mental health is a big concern for, like, probably us all, but definitely, like, something that, like, really concerns me, the fact that our world is progressing in the way it is, but, like, those metrics are all getting worse. Yeah. Like, all those metrics are getting worse. And whether that's, like, I don't know, it's just more recognized now, maybe at one point, but, like, it definitely is getting worse, actually. It definitely really is. And so... A show like this mm. is definitely helping. I think it's good because the way in which, particularly with Ted, is an optimistic guy. Um, he brings out the best in everyone else, but he's closeted himself. You don't really know much of his background. And I know through the show he has panic attacks, he has situations that actually is portrayed very, very well. It really humanizes it. Yeah, it humanizes that show very well because you get all this comedy kind of mucking around and all of a sudden something hits and you're like, oh, I want to just watch. It kind of... Yeah. And then once this therapist comes in, Sharon, yeah. and kind of breaks Ted down... Um, you kind of learn more about mental health and how people deal with it because even Sharon herself, the therapist, has issues. No, not too many spoilers. Oh my God, Gimli. A little kitty just came behind. He oh. wants to join in. Yeah, we've got to get Gimli on the show as um, well. Well, I mean, I'm not going to try and spoil it too much, but like Sharon obviously is dealing with stuff on her own. I'm not going to say what it is, but her and Ted have a relationship, a therapist relationship, professional relationship, but it's it's something that has been portrayed very well, I think, on a show like that and yeah. i think it gives people an idea of like okay i mean if i have to if i deal with something i, I you know I, I should think about what what my mental state is sometimes and i think a show like that is really helpful yeah definitely do you, you know, i was gonna say do you think in a way it kind of like helps um break down the like you know like when it comes to mental health for like men in a way it's like it's yeah it's it's more in a way it's, i don't know how to say this but like people sometimes say like us as men we're not allowed to like show emotions mm. yeah. so there's a masculinity issue yeah which i think, so Ted also, think that show kind of like yes yeah, yeah Ted yeah, also definitely. portrays that well too because he comes from the south and he's not he's not a man's man he has a mustache which is he scary. is a man's man wouldn't you say well no he's not portrayed in the jarist stereotypical man's man persona oh, okay. of like the old like burt reynolds kind of mustache Dude, guy like yeah, I have he no literally feelings. has like a great mustache Ted Lasso has a great <laughs> mustache and he betrays, <laughs> wish. he betrays feelings for everyone else. Like Joe Klecker mustache. And Joe Klecker mustache. Joe Klecker All mustache. American. Shout out to Joe Klecker. Yeah. We love you. Congratulations on your engagement to Sage. Um, that is pretty yeah, cool. Congrats, that's true. That as well. Yeah. That is big news for our We'll get him on soon. For them and um, hashtag about time. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> he betrays the, the masculinity. I think he do, they deal with that as well. Yeah. I think he's much more of a person that He's a leader, but he's also not all about hiding emotions. He's, he's starting to open mm-hmm. up. I yeah. It's a cool thing. Yeah. I don't and, know. That's why I want to No, about. definitely. And like linking it to our podcast, not that we're like doing anything amazing here, but that is one of the things like that I think is cool about the way that we're doing this because in like how we're very honest and we talk about a lot of stuff that probably people wouldn't talk about. Cause like my mom, for example, listened to the first podcast and she was like, I probably wouldn't talk about like alcohol or anything. Like I probably just wouldn't talk about this stuff. But I think like hopefully for people listening, hearing like people talk about this not that we're super accomplished not that we have things worked out really but we're like a little bit more down the line we have some experiences hopefully it helps in some way because there are not many places where you can go to hear that stuff like the struggles that you struggle with in college or maybe even like high school it is hard to find people talking about that stuff in a way that'll be like helpful so i think Mm. hopefully we can uh, my mom said the same thing she did say that yeah she actually uh sent me a text saying she wasn't too happy with the way kind of, just with an image purpose, like, you know, you, you, you don't want to show that kind of image. But yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a real thing because we're having a discussion. Yeah. And I think it's, it's nice because I think people sometimes don't know how to react if somebody else is talking about it. And it's good to be able to have that 
discussion. Yeah, so I hopefully, else, hopefully it helps. Even somebody that you don't know. Yeah. And speaking of that, I think we should move on to the next show, Sex Education, Season 3. Yeah. Amazing. We've, we've, all, we've all watched it. <laughs> well, it is off <laughs> Wait, the... You yeah, have, I really need him. to like... I watch like the terrible shows. You, we, like, got, we got some homework for you. That's you know what's Sex cool. Education, I'll, man? It's so addicting. It's a really good show. Beautifully well written. And I think that's another show because they actually talk about being open about... They're, well, they're so over the top with it. Over but the top. They, they like, definitely hit the points really well. Yeah. It's over the top, but it talks about coming of age kids dealing yeah. with sex and how... Is it like Big Mouth? It's like, it's, it's similar to Big yeah. Mouth, but Big Mouth is very much grotesque. Yes. <laughs> it's much more subtle and there's a bit more of a... The character develops really well. It's also well. not subtle though in some ways. Yeah. No, Jordy, who are your subtle. favorite characters from season three and what are they kind of... How do they resonate with you? Jeez. How do they resonate hey. with you? Uh, <laughs> what, who, what character do you see yourself hey. in in Sex yeah. Education? <laughs> who, 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 what's your favorite character in sex, season three? Mm. I think Eric still and probably Amy. Dude, Amy I want to. I want to be able to do that Eric dance. Like I, we should maybe learn this for the party Which tomorrow. I don't. I don't know what it's called, but it's like really big in the gay community. You know the dance where they go like this. They go like. They go like that. Oh, uh, yeah. What's that called? The macarena. The macarena? <laughs> no, no, it's like <laughs> yeah. they go like that, and it's like. It's like a, I don't know. Is I used, that, I used to see it on TikTok. Is that you telling us that you're out of the closet right now? Maybe. Maybe. That's what's in Nigeria. I think the the main thing season three did was again normalizing like trans relationships, gay relationships, and yeah. Maeve's relationship with Isaac. Who is disabled. Disabled. Yeah. Just, it makes all those things so normal that you don't even question it. It's yeah. freaking sweet. It really does. But like the thing is, I, I honestly think that like that's probably how high schools are today. Like it yeah. definitely helps. Probably more for like the older people that yeah. aren't experiencing that because probably I think high school is obviously they're like much more progressive than like well, it's just, it's older just, generations it's a, nice, it's a nice show because it definitely opens up the conversation for more people and it represents people more yeah let's hold your hand like particularly with um like who's the uh school captain and then i can't remember his name yeah but he he, he isn't sure because his mum is mum's a lesbian right both and his mums both his mums sorry <laughs> one of them is his uh, biological mum and the other one who's actually in ted lasso is um his other mum he has two mums hence Let's be. Well, I'm going with this is he actually has a discussion with them about like yeah he's oh. in a relationship with someone who doesn't identify as a man or a woman. I think she's Maybe. yeah she's non-binary. Yeah. Uh, uh, they sorry. Yeah, I apologize. They, they are non-binary yeah. and they want to make sure that they're identified properly. And he doesn't know if he's able to do that. He mm -hmm. sees her more of as, as a girl. So he like talks as a to she. both of his moms. Yeah. He sees her more of as a she than as a they which is what she represents and it's something that, that i think the show is very very mature about in discussing because there are those relationships where you have to kind of yeah. have that discussion and it was really i think it was really well written and really well done well, it's, it's very educational just put my, from the way it sounds like i just put my head in a pretzel you trying to work out whether you should be saying they or she the no, whole time i should be saying they i was confused because he was yeah. he was identifying her as as, as a she it's a they she, no, he, they. Was, he was identifying her as a she he was like he was identifying they as a she yeah. Sorry, he was identifying. Gay as a shit. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, see, dude, it's tough for it's, us. Like, yeah, we have no yeah. experience with this stuff. Yeah, it's, it's hard yeah. to. But, but you, like, I'm trying. Yeah, it is I, hard. Well, you try, like all you can do is try, and then yeah. it'll I mean, become more and more. You try to like, learn because, like, you don't really want to like well, hurt that's anybody. That's the one thing that I stuff, haven't so. been um, completely. You know, it's tough. Um, like, I've, I don't. I don't have anybody. I've, I don't know anyone who's like transgender. Yeah, and like me, like also like living down south, like you know, there isn't really like you know there isn't that many people who are like part of the lgbt community but like me going out to seattle in a way it's like I, i'm like you know i was trying to like learn more about it so i can like not hurt anybody in a way like to know exactly what i need to say and how to refer to them in the, to that particular person because like i'm not trying to like come out in a way of like i don't really care because i do really care yeah. about like what do you think they are because like yeah. you know everyone in a way tries to find who they are well, that's one of the reasons why i went sorry went down yeah, south because like I wanted to go far away from home so I can like explore and like figure out who I am yeah. as a person. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That's and uh, Nikki Hills, I think, is one athlete that's very big in our community that has been a great advocate. Yes. Um, in that, and I think she'd be someone that oh, if we'd love to have her on the show yeah. to actually discuss it because she's someone that can actually discuss it. Like, yeah, that'd be great. You just messed it up the whole time. <laughs> the, what? They. They. they sorry. Yeah. They can discuss it. I'm really bad at this. I should. Yeah. It's not easy, bro. Yeah. It is not easy. They, no, they, no, they would it's, be, it's not be easy great at in the show. Um, and I think it would help us get insight to their 
um, their outlook on it and how yeah. they um, are able to kind of help people like us. Just, just fucking, we're yeah. just a bunch of simple-minded simpletons, simple minded yeah. plebs. Just, we don't know what we're doing. We're just trying to make, show, keep people. At the end of the day, the show is fantastic. I'm, yeah. I'm, are you Otis or Ruby or Otis and Maeve? <laughs> by the end? Uh, That's see, a question I think, that I think, I think Ruby is so good. Like, how can yeah, you, Ruby, Ruby really but like, Maeve is like own, yeah. And I really loved Adam. I felt sad for Adam at the end. Yeah. But And he, dude, what about his dad? Uh, his dad had a massive growth as well. Massive glow up. Yeah. Got in the kitchen, got, got cooking. Making some cool. salads. Yeah. Some good cool. salads looked like too. They enjoyed them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's sex education. Definitely check that out. Check out Ted Lasso. Check out Squid. Squid. Game. Squid Games. Squid Games. Yeah. Great shows all around. Um, we've been doing this for about 90 minutes, a little more. What ha- Have we covered everything? I believe we have. Yeah. Will you any-, any other topics that you have? So. Anything else? No. Uh, well, we, we, well, yeah. We were going to cover the gala a bit more, but... Oh, this true. will come out after. Yeah. yeah. The gala. Yeah, this a will be out after. People are invited for the gala. People yeah, are we'll flying. S- in. We'll see who turns up. It's going to be big. Who knows? People 500 drive plus. Across country, like yeah. Waleed. I did. Drove yeah. all the way down from Mississippi up here. Thank just you very for much. the gala. Thank you very much for we're that. Gonna, we'll update on next week how it went. Yeah, we'll give yeah. you. I think we're going to do an episode like right after it. So. It's going to be amazing. I'm, I'm actually excited. really excited. I'm excited. I got to figure out what I'm going to do. That's the right attitude. I'm excited. Carlos did not have the right attitude before. I don't know. He was like, it's not going to be very good. And then all of a sudden, we're like, how dare you have that attitude? How often? Oh, it's going to be good. Then he starts. Yeah, this is like a once in a year thing. Like, that's the way it is with distance runners. Like, you do this stuff like not very often. How often do you get invited to a gala? I mean, like, good. You First time for me. For it. Time for I had to do. to get invited to a gala. We had to invent one and invite ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we got invited to a gala. That's how we did it. We, cheat the system. <laughs> we cheated yeah. the system. Oliver here is spending a lot of money on it. You know, yeah. like it's, it's, it's going to be worth it. Time and I'm going to have a yeah. good time. Yeah, yeah. I'm so. excited too. Should be good, but uh, thank you very much for coming on our show yeah. as well. Thank, thank you for having me. Um, yeah. Hopefully, it was a lot of fun. Hope the coffee yeah. was good. How was the coffee? Coffee was amazing. Cortado, two shots of espresso. Yeah, Jordy did a good job. Good job, Joey. I, I, out of practice too. That's first coffee in a couple of weeks. Really? That's yeah, it's pretty good. I, I've, I've been away. Yeah, I liked it hey, a lot. Are these the boxcar beans from Flat? We we had boxcar. I think Fire Creek Roastery. You guys had ampersand. Whatever was in the other one. I think it was ampersand. Just ampersand down the road. Good. That's all I know. Yeah, ampersand's pretty good. I got a good buzz out of it. Yeah. So yeah. we're excited to see you in Seattle. See how that goes. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, man. Appreciate Congratulations. It. Yeah. Everything. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's new chapter. Yeah. At the start. We'll see you indoors. We'll be seeing you indoors. Yeah. Oh, you guys are gonna. I gotta run USA's. I don't know what I'm gonna see. I want to see oh, what USA's. Oh, the American League stuff. Well, Maybe probably. Just any I think so. Race that's not. Yeah, any race that's not. Just generally. Um, yeah. But yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. This is the end of uh, episode two. We'll uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Adios. See you next week. See you next week.